present. Staff Director and Attorney John Cooper is also here along with a few other staff members and the Metro IT people and along with the Metro Clerk's Office. All of us that are present are following guidelines for social separation and there are less than 10 of us in the chambers. Also, Mike Jamison from Mayor Cooper's office is also here tonight. Uh, by the way, the council continues to meet based on an executive which allows local government legislative bodies to meet electronically during this time of emergency to handle the city's necessary business. As compared to a 30-page agenda two weeks ago, tonight the agenda is just 13 pages, usually because the public would not be here. This was true two weeks ago. The Council's Rules and Confirmations Committee did not hold hearings with those that were going for, for be elected to or appointed to various city boards and commissions. However, that, that committee did meet tonight. They did interview a number of people that are up for appointments to boards, including Bill Freeman, national businessman, who's being reappointed to the Metro Airport Authority. Uh, that went through committee without any controversy. We expect those to be presented to the council tonight and likely to be approved. There are also three pages of resolutions tonight, a little over a page of first reading bills. We had about 10 pages of that last time. Five readings, five pages of second reading ordinances, and a little over two and a half pages of bills on third and final reading. Legislation of interest tonight is Council Resolution 2022-76. It would approve a $35,000 settlement against Metro involving one of the victims of the Waffle House shooting. Um, Keely deceivable back in uh, the shooting happened back in April of 2018. Okay. This lawsuit was filed by the Silva's uh, next of kin, Shondell Brooks. It alleges the city's emergency communications department mishandled the 911 calls for help in the shooting. It sought $300,000 in damages. According to the council staff analysis, there were some problems that Metro had some errors in this, but after they had retained an expert a trauma physician, they did not feel that the injuries sustained were so serious that, it, that a quicker response would have made any difference in Mr. De Silva's death, unfortunately. Sending the face, however, would be very expensive, so the Metro Legal Department believes this $35,000 settlement is a better way to go. There was an earlier vote by the council, led by Council Member Tonka Bershier, urging the city to settle the matter and bring some closure to the family, and this matter tonight apparently is the result of that, and we'll see what the council decides to do. It's expected to approve it. The council might will also consider several bills regarding economic issues arising out of the pandemic. The two non-binding memorializing resolutions, one is RS-2020-286, requesting flexibility in rent and mortgage collection by landlords and expressing support for a moratorium on evictions and foreclosures to help provide housing security in the community. The other non-binding resolution is RS-2020-287, asking the city's health department to seek grant funding to track, study, and report on the impact of COVID-19 on minority and rural communities. On second reading bills, there is BL 2020-224 to require landlords to provide notice to tenants prior to the sale of their rental property. There's also a bill still pending on third reading, BL 2020-149, that requires a 90-day notice to a tenant before a rent increase can take effect unless that's already set out in their contract. By the time the council meets again on May 5th, Eric Cooper will have presented his first operating budget to the council. That will happen uh, next Tuesday night, next Tuesday afternoon late. That uh, proposal is also likely to include a significant property tax hike. In fact, it could be the mayor says as high as 20%. To that end, previewing a very difficult budget situation that Metro faces, there's Bill BL 2020 234 on second reading. It seeks to waive the building permit fees on those rebuilding after the March 3rd tornado, which has also complicated both the community and Metro's budget situation. Those waivers could cost up to $60,000 for the city, depending exactly on what is rebuilt. Uh, Council Member Jeff from Syracuse, who is here tonight, is looking to move this. He has been amended to the committee to make sure people can't double dip and get both a uh, waiver of their thing and a waiver of their fees, but then also get that off on their insurance as well. We'll see what happens. The bill again is on second reading tonight. Finally tonight, the council will consult on third and final reading uh, BL 2020-109. The proposal would set up new rules and regulations for the regulations on the size of the fleet uh, for the overall electric scooters, but also authorize another RFP or request for proposal to select which scooter firms can operate in Nashville. The whole topic of scooters has been a very hot issue for over a year with the council. We'll see what the council wants to do to move ahead with this latest effort to regulate the industry. All bills on third and final reading, by the way, require 21 yes votes for approval. If you want to follow tonight's meeting as it progresses, you can find the council agenda online, as well as the council staff analysis with explanations of all the legislation. Just go to the Metro Council portion of the Nashville.gov website, then to the Legislative Information Center. We'll also be placing the bill numbers on the screen when they're up for consideration tonight, so you can follow along when the bill comes up and keep up with what's going on. Let's go now to Vice Mayor Jim Schulman, who will be gathering the meeting to order shortly. <laughs>
Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, April the 21st, 2020. Will all members of the council, as well as the public watching, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation tonight will be brought to us in song by the guest of council member Nancy Van Rees. Margaret Becker is a Nashville musician, producer, speaker, and author. She is the recipient of four Grammy nominations and has won multiple Dove Awards. She also was given the Lumiere Dumond Award for Humanitarian Excellence. Please listen now to Margaret Becker. Thank you, Council. I appreciate you inviting me to your co meeting here. Uh, I uh, went looking for some sort of piece of song to sing to you guys today, and I Googled in these in certain uncertain times, and I found everything from what McDonald's franchise needs are doing to six easy steps to keep your life together during COVID woes. So my, my uh, mission failed, and I just want to leave you with what brought me through two pages of insurance companies trying to sell me things and uh, nothing real value. I, uh, my, my hope for you is that you, you will be focused in these uncertain times on what matters in your life and that you will find stability and instability to those you serve in these uncertain times, that you'll find solace in friends and family and that you might bring the same to others. And I'm speaking for those of us out here. Thank you, council members. Thank you for your time, your energy, your wisdom, and your best guesses. Thank you for your work. So I'll leave you with this very short intention. Be peace of the running way through you. Be peace of the flowing air to you. Be of the quiet to you, Thank you again. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. And to the Republic for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you may be seated. Um, uh, so uh, for the viewing audience, uh, let me briefly explain what's happening here in the chamber. We did this last uh, two weeks ago. Uh, again, there are very few of us in the chamber. Uh, I have two council members here along with myself. Uh, we have the clerk. Uh, we have some technical folks. Mr. Nolan's here. Uh, John Cooper, the director of the council office here is here. And Mr. Mike Jamison is here who represents the mayor's office. Uh, council members are participating by computer access pursuant to the governor's executive order number 16. Uh, we will slowly go through the agenda on matters that require voice votes. We will be checking uh, for those in favor, those opposed, and those who are abstaining on roll call votes. We will be calling on members one by one. The council members, a reminder. Uh, keep your microphones muted when you're not actively speaking on a matter. The noise in the background can be rather loud. If you, if you wish to speak on a matter, you do not have to text that request anymore. Remember, and so please, your, please use the raise your hand feature explained uh, in your instructions. Uh, we are being broadcast on Channel 3, and we are also being streamed on Nashville.gov. Um, both that broadcast and the streaming have about a 30-second delay. Please pay attention through your connection on your computer. And if you're not connected with audio via your telephone, please call the support team right now uh, with the phone number that had been provided. 
there's information that you were provided with this. If there's a problem, read it, make sure you can call. Uh, we want everybody on the call. Uh, we will go through this slowly as we did at the last meeting, make sure that everybody is following along. So um, let's get on um, with, um, I'm already seeing some issues. We'll take care of those in just a minute. Uh, I will say that we will not be suspending the calling of the roll as we usually do, but instead in order to determine who is present for this meeting, uh, I'm gonna ask the clerk to call the roll. Remember when it is your turn to answer, please unmute and then mute after you have finished. Madam Clerk, you will please call the roll. Councilman Mendez. Councilman Hurt. Present. Council Member Allen. Present. Council Member Glover. Present. Council Member Suarez. Present. Council Member Paul. Present. Council Member Toon. Present. Council Member Gamble. Present. Council Member Swope. Present. Council Member Parker. Council Member Parker. Council Member Withers. Present. Council Member Benedict. Present. Council Member Van Reef. Present. Council Member Hancock. Present. Council Member Young. Present. Council Member Hagar. Present. Council Member Evan. Present. Council Member Bradford. Present. Council Member Present, 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 present. Council Member Syracuse. Present. Gosh. Council Member Welsh. Present. Council Member Sledge. Present. Is that a present? Yes. Council Member Cash. Present. Council Member O'Connell. Present, 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 present. Council Member Robert. Present. Council Member Taylor. Present. Council Member Hauser. Present. Council Member Drupal. Present. Council Member Murphy. Here. Council Member Pulley. Present. Council Member Johnson. Present. Council Member Nash. Present. Council Member Bircher. Council Member Bircher. Council Member Bircher. Is that present? Council Member Porterfield. Is that Ms. Porterfield present? Mm -hmm. Council Member Sepulveda. Is that present, Ms. Sepulveda? Yes, ma'am. Council Member Rutherford. Present. Council Member Stiles. Present. 
Council Member Lee. I am here. Council Member Henderson. Present. Council Member Rosenberg. Present. Council Member Parker. Present. I'm getting a message that uh, he is present, but his audio is having trouble. Council so. Member Berger. And I also got a message from her that she's having trouble getting access. I think we're working on that right now. Okay. So, um, Madam Clerk, how many members do we have? That would be 39 with Ms. Bircher having technical issues and Vice Mayor Schulman is also present. Okay, so we have 39. The one that's missing would be Council Member Bircher at this point just because she can't get on. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, I believe our. Um, so council member Virtue, if you're actually watching this um we are trying to get you situated with uh, a meeting number i think our it folks are trying to get you on um, uh, once you uh, council member Virtue, if you can hear me once you get on if you'll just notify us so we can make sure that you're properly recorded all right so um let's continue on is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from april 7 2020 Proper motion for the second. second. Without, without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Council Member Rosenberg, you are recognized for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I make a motion that the April 21st, 2020 Metropolitan Council meeting agenda constitutes essential business of this body and the Metropolitan Government, and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID 19 outbreak. All right, thank you, Council Member Rosenberg. Uh, that's a second. Um, any discussion on the motion? Checking, see nobody's hands raised. Uh, as we did at the last meeting, I'm gonna need a voice vote. All those in favor of Council Member Rosenberg's motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say no. See if they can do a quick test with you. I don't think that was a no. Uh, any abstentions? Um, then the motion is approved at this point 39 4, 0 against, 0 abstentions. Um, any corrections that need to be made to that, um, that count? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you, Council Member Rosenberg, Madam Clerk. Are there any messages from the mayor? Yes, Vice Mayor, there is one message from the mayor. Dear Vice Mayor Shulman and members of the council, please find attached the same recorded forms required to be submitted to the local legislative body following a sales bond. These reports are for sale of $169,575,000 water and sewer revenue bonds Series 2020A and $45,530,000 water and sewer revenue refunding bonds, Series 2020B, authorized by the Metropolitan Council by resolution number RS 2020 215. The bonds closed on April 8, 2020. The bonds were sold on April 1, 2020. Interest cost for the 2020A bond was 3.0187% and the 2020B bond was 1.5987%. The refunding bonds resulted in net present value savings of 12.14% for a total of $6.1 million. As always, we appreciate the Metropolitan Council's support on these important financing initiatives. Sincerely, John Cooper, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, so let's proceed ahead. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, a couple of announcements tonight. Uh, first, pursuant to the passage of RS 2020-173 and Rule 5 of our Rules of Procedure, I am appointing a, a special committee to work with the IT Department of Metro uh, to determine whether a plan can be implemented to create an online messaging system for council members 
to communicate that is consistent with the Tennessee Open Meetings Act. Council passed that back in February of this year. It was Council Member Suarez's uh, resolution. And so uh, I'm appointing Council Member Suarez to lead the committee. And I'm also appointing Council Members Rosenberg and Roten to serve on that uh, committee as well. I'm asking them to report back on an as needed basis to keep the, keep the council informed as to their progress. Um, let me remind council members, um, if you have, um, uh, you need to keep your phones on mute because uh, we're getting some background noise. So if you don't have it on mute, um, please mute your phones. Um, uh, right now, um, I'm actually asking council member Hurt to unmute her phone Recognizing Council Member Hurt uh, as Chair of the Health and Hospitals Committee for an update on the current situation in Nashville and Davidson County uh, concerning COVID-19. Council Member Hurt, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to share this information. And I also thank Councilman O'Connell for some of the important information that he provided during the announcement period. The first thing I'd like to indicate is, is that our medical uh, director of, of, of public health, Dr. Michael Caldwell, has extended the safe at home order to May 1st, 2020. The second thing I'd like to do is provide state uh, information in regards to uh, COVID-19. As of today, there have been 7,394 cases confirmed across the state of Tennessee with 157 deaths and 3,828 are recovered. Locally here in Nashville, there's 1,936 confirmed cases with 22 deaths and 987 recovered. Also, it's important to know that 18,198 uh, citizens have been tested, and about 10%, 10.6% of those have tested positive. I'd also like to share that uh, as chair of health, hospitals, and social services, I have worked with the Metropolitan Development and Housing Agency to screen and test individuals at their senior facilities there public housing facilities. We started on April 10th and 11th at Garnet Studios in Edge Hill community. And we uh, tested, well, we screened about 50 people and tested about 20 that first weekend. This past weekend, we were at Edge Field and there were um, about 68 who had actually been screened and 56 were tested. We did find one positive in that Edgefield, um, in Garnet Studios, not Edgefield. I hadn't gotten the, re the results back from Edgefield, um, but we will be going to Hadley this coming up weekend on the 24th and 25th. Vine Hill will follow that on May 1st and 2nd. The Parthenon will be May 8th and 9th and Madison Towers on May 15th and 16th. This has been um, a collaborative effort with Nashville General Hospital. They have a partnership with Capstone Testing Services out of Atlanta, and they have been providing tests. And Dr. Alicia Hall has been volunteering her time uh, to provide the, the screening for the citizens. And we know that it's very, very important to test trace and treat those individuals, especially those that are in the black community where there's dense population. And talking about testing, there are three sites at Nissan Stadium, Meharry Medical College, and Kmart, uh, Murfreesboro, the old Kmart on Murfreesboro Pike. For anyone who's interested in getting more information or have any concerns, they can call 615-862 
All right, thank you, Council Member Hurt. That was very helpful. We may, as we keep going through this, um, keep uh, going back to you as Chairman of the Health and Hospitals Committee for updates. Uh, we appreciate it. I know that we're getting lots of information on it, but it's always helpful to have somebody else report back and just make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, Absolutely. So again, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, you Council Member Hurt. That was very helpful. Thank you. Um, a couple of other things. Um, uh, two other things. I received word this morning that the CEO of our sister city in Belfast, Northern Ireland, uh, the CEO is like uh, the county executive, the Honorable Suzanne Wiley. Her mother passed away. Um, so our thoughts and prayers go out tonight to their family. Um, the last thing I had before we get into the uh, agenda is uh, I'd like to recognize Council Member Bob Mendes, who's chairman of the Budget Committee, for an update for the council on the budget. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I just want to provide a quick update about where we're at on budget process scheduling. Um, today, we heard from the mayor's office that the administration will make its budget presentation to the council next uh, Tuesday, April 28th at 3.30. That will happen over WebEx remotely. The public will be able to watch on the usual Metro uh, channels. And then um, setting that date, let us set the rest of the council schedule. So here's some of the key dates. Um, the full schedule should be in council members' inboxes um, from the council office around 4.30 this afternoon. But some of the key dates. Um, by May 5, um, all the department heads have been asked to uh, provide um, answers back to me of a set of standard questions um, that uh, Director Cooper and I were able to put together. Um, those will be posted online for council members and the public by the end of May 7th. During the weeks of May 11 and May 18, we'll conduct the council departmental hearings. Um, those are going to happen over WebEx. Um, so we're, we're going to work through that, um, trying to keep it as uh, normal as possible. And then the only other date I'll mention now is the public hearing on both the uh, CIB, the capital improvement budget, as well as the operating budget is now uh, penciled in for our regularly scheduled meeting on Tuesday, June 2nd. Um, and uh, um, if we're conducting a live meeting, then we'll have the public come live. If we're over electronic means, we'll um, have to provide more details uh, in the coming weeks about the, how the public can participate on June 2nd. Um, and that's uh, the update for now, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's very helpful. So remember, April the 28th, 3.30 to 5 is when there will be a budget presentation for the uh, Metro Council. Um, and then check your inbox um, to make sure that you see these very important dates um, that are coming up in terms of actually looking at uh, the proposed budget for next year. Um, so we may move on to elections and confirmations. Um, the first one up actually does not re receive a, a rules committee report. Uh, that's for the selection of the Metropolitan Auditor. Um, what happens is that three candidates um, were approved by the Metropolitan National Audit Committee. They are ranked in order uh, pursuant to the code. They have to be, um, we have to, um, the Audit Committee actually has to provide three names, they rank them in order. And that's where you see we have uh, Ms. Lauren Riley, uh, Paul Morris, and John Valtierra. Uh, Ms. Riley uh, is ranked first, Mr. Morris second, and Mr. Valtierra is ranked third of the three candidates that are being presented to the council. Um, there are two council representatives on the audit committee, uh, council member Suara and council member Druffel. Um, and I have asked them if they would both to chime in. I'll start with Council Member Suara and then go to Council Member Druffel just so they can give you an idea of how this process works. Uh, Council Member Suara, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to uh, stress to the Council that uh, our last Hampton Auditor left last year, so it's been a year since we've been in the process. And we had about 26 people apply for the position. Uh, we were able to narrow it down to 11 that we did a background check on. Of the 11, the uh, committee actually interviewed seven candidates. And of the seven that we interviewed, we unanimously agreed that Ms. Riley uh, is the most qualified 
Uh, Ms. Riley, as it comes to us, is somebody who is actually working as the principal auditor right now with the internal audit department at Metro. Uh, so she has the experience with being with Metro, um, and she did very well in the interview. So it was a very lengthy, very long the process started a long time ago, but it was very thorough. Uh, and so the, the committee highly uh, favored Ms. Riley for the position. And that's why she is ranked uh, number one uh, among the three that have been presented. All right. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Druffel, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, I think that uh, Lauren, as our number one candidate, was a unanimous vote. Um, my notes that I had for her that uh, she had both private and public experience um with deloitte and with metro um strong analytical skills good sense of integrity um we think she can use technology to an advantage to help us for the future but uh we came away with three really strong candidates but uh, we also think she can hit the ground running which we feel like will be a value uh as we start to get through some of the complexities of uh of grants and stuff so um uh, it's our recommendation that Lauren Riley be the auditor uh, director for Metro Council. Right, thank you, Council Member Druffel. This was a very long process. It goes back to the last uh, group that was on the audit committee. Uh, it went through um, a very, very long process. Um, Ms. Gina Pruitt served as our interim director. Uh, she did an outstanding job, but this was a requirement to go ahead and fill this. Uh, again, the National, uh, the Metropolitan National Audit Committee spent a great deal of time on this. And so you've got the ranked order, uh, again, as follows. Ms. Lauren Riley was the top ranked candidate, uh, Mr. Paul Morris second, and John Valtierra third. Um, are there any questions to Council Member Druffel or Council Member Suara about the process? Uh, Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. You'll need to uh, unmute your phone, Council Member Henderson. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. My apologies. Um, uh, my questions are, I guess, to uh, process on the audit committee end of things. Uh, but also for us as as council members, are we just um, being presented this uh, and taking it under advisement? Are we um, voting on this? And I just wondered if any of these meetings or interviews have been uh, open to the community. I've, I've been kind of following the audit committee agenda, but um, I just if we could just speak more particularly to uh, that. Also, I could not hear a fair amount of what Council Lady Suara was saying as to Ms. Riley's um, professional background. I, I heard Mr. Uh, Druffel mention Deloitte and Metro, um, but I didn't know had she worked for Metro previously. Um, and so I wanted to clarify that from a professional standpoint and also to inquire um, why specifically this is before us if we'll be voting on it or we're just being advised. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for your, thank you for your counsel, Council Mary Henderson. I'm going to turn it over to Council Member Druff in just a minute. So we can vote tonight if you are ready to proceed. Uh, this is a position that's been kind of uh, we've had an interim for a while. Uh, you can always defer the vote if that's what you'd like to do. But I'm going to turn it over to Council Member Druffel because I think he was just getting ready to respond. Council Member Druffel. Yeah, uh, good question. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Riley has been with uh, Metro uh, Audit for seven years, uh, most recently as a principal auditor uh, supervising seven. So uh, good experience. Uh, we know her. Um, there's a lot of confidence within the audit department. So um, that's just a, a, a part of what she has bringing to the table. She's got a master's degree, CPA, and, and a bunch of certifications. It's, we'll, we'll have to read sideways for a while to, to get them all. So um, we just got a lot of confidence in her. Um, 
Um, Council Member Henderson? Yes, I guess just by way of follow up. Um, respectfully, I think as a returning council member, uh, I, I feel that our um, several members on our body have had some concerns about uh, the audit function um, at Metro and how that operates um, and uh, some just concerns in that area and respect and appreciate all the, the members of our audit department um, and appreciate Ms. Riley as well. Um, but I, um, I, I, I personally um, respectfully would, would like to uh, uh, look at this a little more closely. I, I did not realize this would be uh, before us. And I think given some of the lingering concerns as to how the audit department has worked over the last few years. Um, that sort of affects my determination, and I would I would be interested to know, you know, how Ms. Riley would respond to some of the work of our audit department um, over the years, with which I know, you know, some members of our body had been concerned. So, um, again, uh, appreciate her very much. Understand she's. Uh, very qualified, respect the audit committee that she is uh, uh, the, their top candidate, but I, I just feel that uh, this is a, a crucial um, position for the city um, because I think it has been, uh, there's been some concerns in this space in the past. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know kind of what the, the time constraint is that we're, we're under. Um, but I, I don't know if these interviews, much like some of the other interviews we do, were, were public and available to the community or to council. Um, I would um, feel better uh, uh, deferring this vote till I could understand um, better uh, the, the candidate's qualifications. All right. I, I think before we get to that question, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Cooper, who had a, um, uh, who wanted to make a response. This is uh, uh, Director John Cooper. Mr. Cooper. Thank you. I was just going to relay the conversation I had with Finance Director Crumbo about this. And um, given the COVID situation and the tornado recovery and the need for oversight of federal and, and state funding, um, he felt it was very important to go ahead and have a permanent auditor in place. And he felt that that would also be important to the comptroller. Um, so that was the on the agenda for tonight. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Cooper, it, in that case, have um, and I apologize if I have missed something, but has, have we received a communication to that effect as to the urgency of this? I mean, I think we all acknowledge that having someone in, who presently is serving as our interim? Mr. Cooper. Gina. Gina Pruitt, Pruitt has been serving as interim. Yeah, Gina Pruitt um, stepped in and served as an interim for, I started out, I think she just agreed to do it for a couple of months and then she ended up doing it for almost half a year. So the position has been, position has been open. Um, it took a while through different channels, um, but uh, I think you heard council member Suara, uh, council member Druffel, and I also serve on that audit committee um, and, um, yeah, I'm also in agreement with the recommendation, but I also send, understand your concern. Council member Henderson. So, um, you talked around it. Did you want to make a motion to defer? I'm just clarifying. Yes, sir. I would like to move to defer, uh, this election one meeting. Okay. So there is a motion to defer, uh, for purposes of just discussion. We'll take a second. Um, but there are people in the queue. Council member Welch. Um, you're recognized. Um, I move approval of Lauren Riley as the Metro Auditor. So, can you say that again? You I move approval. approval of Lauren Riley as the Metro okay. Auditor. Okay, well hold that motion because we have a motion in front of it to defer one meeting. Uh, Council Member Glover, I think you had your, um, your hand raised as well. Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So I, if, if I may, Vice Mayor, let me ask you a couple of questions, because when I first got on the council several years ago, uh, I served on this audit committee, and it's extremely important. I don't know if it's you or Mr. Cooper who explains 
who this auditor answers to and exactly what their responsibilities are. But can someone please explain that? Because I think it's an important issue, uh, if I may ask first. Um, sure, I'm gonna go to uh, Mr. Cooper and then Council Member Mendez. Um, so Mr. Cooper, you're first. Council Member Mendez served on the audit committee for two, was it two years or four years? For four years, uh, so he can answer the same type of question. Council, uh, Mr. Cooper, first. So the internal auditor position is created by charter and it is an independent position. The auditor answers only to the audit committee, which includes two members of council and the vice mayor and uh, representatives, um, industry representatives or from the profession. And um, it, it is a charter created position. It used to be a division of the finance department, but in or 15 years ago, the UC Council put it on the ballot to have this as an independent position created by charter and selected by the council. Uh, council Member Mendez. The only other thing I was gonna add about how it works is um, I think by charter, we're, our job is to either select one of the three or reject the slate. Um, uh, this council doesn't really have a say and then whenever is appropriate, I'd like to speak against the motion to defer. Okay. You want me to go ahead or? Um, let me make sure, because I've got a number of hands raised. So let's go through that. This is all. Uh, uh, by what we, Mayor. Yeah, Council Member Glover. Yeah, let me let me just wrap the comment. Yeah, I served, I served four years on that as well when I first got on the council. And thank you to uh, Councilman Mendez, because that was one of the issues so thank thank you and I, I will uh hush and let everybody else speak thank you sir all right thank you council member i've got um council member bradford you recognized thank you vice mayor i just want to i just wanted to second um council member henderson's motion for a deferral i believe this oh, okay. is something that we need more information on all right um any other discussion on uh, from you on the uh, deferral motion Okay, uh, Council Member Nash, you're recognized. Yes, I would like to speak uh, against the motion to defer. I think we've already had our uh, audit committee vet these folks. I trust their judgment. Uh, we also heard from Mr. Cooper that uh, Finance Director Crumbo thinks it's an important position to fill and sooner rather than later. So again, I'm here against uh, the motion. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Murphy, you recognize. Thank you. I too was a little confused once we got into Rules Committee and it appeared that we were going to be discussing this or interviewing um, and looking at and talking to the, the applicants more there. And so I too wanted to, to kind of echo Council Lady Henderson's confusion tonight on this. And, and I do think it warrants a little bit more looking into. And so I wanted to voice my support to her motion. All right, thank you. Council Member Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I think uh, uh, Attorney Cooper um, addressed it, but I was having a, a little bit of a hard time hearing exactly what he said. Um, if this is deferred for one meeting, um, is, is this going to cause any harm or damage? Um, and I, I believe he said something along the lines of why uh, Director Crumbo said that we needed to move forward, but I, I just couldn't hear it cl clearly. Uh, Mr. Cooper. Uh, Mr. Crumbo stated to me uh, he felt the need to move forward because of the oversight that's needed regarding the, the uh, COVID and the tornado recovery uh, dealing with the financial issues involved. Um, the, there's no legal reason why it cannot be deferred. Um, it was a very long recruitment process and it's my understanding from HR that there's some concern that, that you could potentially lose uh, candidates, um, but there's no, there's no legal reason regarding uh, a deferral. All right. Uh, Council Member Porterfield, anything else? No, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I, my question is really for the sponsor of the motion to defer. Uh, I wonder if Council Member Henderson could 
speak a little more clearly to what we as a body might learn during the deferral process. Councilmember Henderson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I I think um, I just uh, respectfully, I, you know, I, I appreciate our audit committee. Uh, I subscribe to the audit committee agenda, and um, I was not aware that this was being discussed in committee. I knew that we had an interim, and I concur um, that we do need a permanent uh, audit position. Um, but just like the council uh, voted 15 years ago by charter to make this an independent position, the audit function in Metro government is uh, so vital. And, you know, respectfully, it's been a fairly anemic uh, 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 function on matters of major concern and complexity. And so um, I, I just uh, feel strongly that if the administration thought that this was so urgent and this was being discussed in committee, um, I, again, respectfully appreciate we have tornado, pandemic, all those things. Um, but, uh, you know, I would have listened into the rules committee on which I do not serve had I known um, that this was being uh, discussed today. And I just feel that Again, very respectful of all those candidates and, and Ms. Riley her, herself, I, I mean, no disrespect, but I, I am somewhat concerned given some of the um, uh, challenges in the audit department with the audit function uh, historically and in recent years um, that this is an internal hire. Um, I, I appreciate um, institutional memory and the work of our audit department. Again, I, I just, um, I am concerned that because of um, just the environment in which we are operating, that is, it, it's, um, I, I can't in good conscience make this vote today with the information that I have. I don't see anything in my analysis about this. Um, I do not have my agenda printed out. If this is, is, is mentioned, um, the agenda is not on WebEx before me. Um, I am trying to be an informed council member and do my homework. Um, and I, you know, I would assert to colleagues that that's, that's what I do for every meeting. But um, I was not aware we were making this vote today and we've not received anything from the administration. Um, I respect and appreciate the report of Ms. Suara and Mr. Druffel, but I frankly find that insufficient at this time to understand um, uh, for a vote of this magnitude. All right, so um, Council Member Henderson, I'm gonna go to Council Member Suara, who is on the committee as is uh, Council Member Druffel and I. So um, there are limitations on what can be done with this review. These, uh, Council Member Suara can probably explain it better, but these um, these interviews by the audit committee were confidential, pursuant to the Department of Human Resources review. So um, I don't think they have released the tapes um, of these interviews, but uh, and that was for the protection of the candidates. But there were certain requirements that were uh, put forth to actually interview that uh, the individuals. And again, uh, the the only thing you can do, the only thing the council can do is either select one of the candidates or just re reject the whole slate and send it back to the audit committee. You can't bring in the other candidates. Um, the process is you get these three, they are ranked and then you vote on, you vote on a candidate that you'd like. I understand what your talk, what your concern is, but let me turn it over to council member Suara and she can maybe explain it a little bit better. Council member Suara, you're recognized. You Thank you, Mr. President, and I'm sorry that I was breaking out the last time, uh, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to take the time to explain the process of how the committee actually went from 26 candidates uh, down to one. Uh, it was just not because it was internal. It was based on not just the resume, but also the interview as well. Now, the uh, process of interviewing, because we had so many candidates, we did not open it because if we, we, we had to break it into two different interviews, and if we made it public at that point, it would give undue advantage 
to the ones that integrate later, which was one of the reasons why we did that. I also want to, to say that I don't know what the history has been in the past, uh, having joined the committee new, but I will tell you that one of the things that I like about Metro Internal Audit Department is the fact that it is uh, independent, meaning that you know the people on it don't have to worry about um, whether they will say something against the people writing the check. The committee, uh, the, the, the department answers to the audit committee. And on your audit committee, you have uh, the um, Tennessee uh, Society of CPA represented, you have the labor represented, uh, the Chamber of Commerce represented. Um, and based on what I've seen, I'm speaking as, as a council member and also as a CPA, I went through those, uh, we all went through those resumes, we come through it, we had a lot of uh, candidates with a lot of uh, experience. But when you look at the totality of the experience, uh, uh, coupled with the uh, professional background, also coupled with the fact that, yes, Ms. Riley did work in Metro, um, that was not just the only thing that we looked at. So I wanted to, that's why when I was speaking at first, I was trying to explain to everyone that it was not just three candidates, it was 26, uh, that we narrowed down to 11, then they will finally narrow down to seven. Um, these meetings will be available later, uh, the resume are there to look at, um, but we need to trust our committees to do uh, what they are there to do. And we need to understand that the people that we put in this committee are also professionals um, that are looking at this information. I hope that helps. Uh, I just joined the audit committee not too long ago, but from what I have seen, uh, uh, they, are, they work hard and they're independent and they actually say a lot of things that I do respect. Uh, as somebody who comes from external audits, I've always worried about external audits and the fact that they have to be objective uh, and I seem to find Metro to be that. In terms of trying to get this approval done uh, faster or, or bringing it forward now, it's just because when it comes to hiring, uh, you don't offer a job the same day that you approve it. There's still things that I have to go through in terms of making an offer, making sure everything is ready. Uh, and now that we're getting a lot of federal funds, we want to make sure that the oversight is there. That's why the committee wants to bring it forward to the council as soon as possible to make sure that the council knows where we're coming from, the council is able to ask questions, and that once we approve it, then the IRM process in terms of making sure someone is in place uh, uh, takes place, which is not something that happens immediately. And so um, if there's any other questions, <coughs> can answer, I'll be more than happy to, but this was a very, uh, we've been on it since I know since December, and I believe that it actually started before then. Some candidates actually interviewed twice. Uh, uh, and so that's the process that went on. It's very detailed, it's very thorough, uh, and that's what I can, I can offer. So I hope that helps. All right, uh, thank you, Councilmember Swar. Uh, Councilmember Hancock. I'd like to call the question, please. Uh, okay, so uh, the previous question has been called. Um, so we're gonna vote on the previous question. So the previous question is get us to the motion to defer. Yeah, that's what's before us right now. So um, previous question is on the motion to defer. I, I'm sorry, is the vote on the motion to defer. So everybody who's ready to vote on the motion to defer, this is not on the actual motion, but just on the previous question. All in favor of the previous question, say aye. 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 Okay. All those, all those opposed, say no. 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 It'll be a two-thirds vote on the previous question. Okay. So um, we're going to have to call the roll because it does have to be a two-thirds vote on the previous question. Um, so. Uh, so here's what we're doing. This is just on the previous question, not on the motion to defer. You're just voting on whether you want to vote on the motion to defer. Okay. All right. So Madam Clerk, uh, we're going to take a roll call vote. Um, take the roll. Councilmember Mendez. In favor of 
Yeah, so this is in favor of, of calling the question. So let's make sure we're clear. This is uh, on the previous question. It's not on any motion to defer. It's not on which candidate. It's just whether you're ready to vote on the motion to defer. So aye. Council Member Hurt? Yes. Council Member Allen? Aye. Council Member Glover? Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Toombs. Aye. Council Member Gamble. Aye. Council Member. Yes, please. Council Member Parker. Aye. Council Member Withers. Aye. Councilmember Benedict? Aye. Councilmember Van Reed? Aye. Councilmember Hancock? Aye. Is that an aye? Aye. That wasn't aye, that's not my dog. <laughs> Councilmember Young? Aye. Councilmember Hagar? No. Council Member Evans? Yes. Council Member Bradford? Aye. Is that an aye? Correct. Thank you. Council Member Roten? Aye. Council Member Syracuse? Council Member Syracuse does it aye. Council Member Welsh? Aye. Council Member Sledge? Aye. Council Member Cash? Aye. Council Member O'Connell? Council Member Robert? Aye. Council Member Taylor? Aye. Council Member Hauser? Aye. Council Member Drockel? Aye. Council Member Murphy? Aye. Council Member Coley? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Aye. Council Member Nash? Aye. Council Member Bercher? Yes. Council Member Porterfield? Aye. Council Member Sepulveda? Aye. Council Member Rutherford? Aye. Council Member Stiles? Aye. Council Member Lee? Aye. Council Member Henderson? No. Council Member Rosenberg? Aye. So the vote is uh, 37 4 on the previous question, uh, 3 against, and no abstentions. 37 4 the previous question, 3 no's, and 0 abstentions. So a uh, previous question prevails. Previous question prevails. So we are on the motion to defer. Um, so let's try this by voice vote. We may have to do it by roll call. So it's a motion to defer one meeting on the vote for the Metropolitan Auditor. All those in favor of the motion to defer, say aye. 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 Okay, opposed, say no. 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 <laughs> Any abstentions in there? No. Yeah, I heard a no from uh, Councilmember Hager twice. All right, so we're gonna take a roll call vote. So uh, once again, now we're on the motion to defer one meeting. Uh, this is to defer one meeting, the vote on the Metropolitan Auditor. So uh, Madam Clerk, if you would, take the vote. Councilmember Mendez? No. Councilmember Hurt? 
No. Council Member Allen? No. Council Member Allen, is that a no? No. So, uh, well, let's make sure we got that. Council Member Allen, are you are you voting no on the deferral motion? Yes, I'm voting no. Okay, got it. All right, thank you. Council Member Glover? No. Council Member Suara? No. Council Member Hall? No. Council Member Toon? Aye. Council Member Gamble? No. Council Member Quote? No. Council Member Parker? <laughs> Aye. Council Member Withers? No. Council Member Benedict? No. Council Member Van Reese? Council Member Van Reese? No. Council Member Hancock? No. Council Member Young? No. Council Member Hager? Council Member Hager? No. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? No. No. Yeah. Council Member Hager, that was a no, correct? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Council Member uh, Hager votes no. Council Member Evans? No. Council Member Bradford? Yes. Council Member Rosen? Council Member Roten? No. Council Member Syracuse? Mr. Syracuse votes no. Council Member Welsh? No. Council Member Sledge? No. Council Member Cash? No. Council Member O'Connell? No. Council Member Roberts? No. Council Member Taylor? No. Council Member Hauser? No. Council Member Druffle? No. Council Member Murphy? Yes. Council Member Foley? No. Council Member Johnston? No. Council Member Nash? No. Council Member Berger? Yes. Council Member Porterfield? No. Council Member Sepulveda? No. Council Member Rutherford? No. Council Member Stiles? Yes. Council Member Lee? No. Council Member Henderson? Yes. Council Member Rosenberg? Yes. All right, so uh, eight, uh, the vote is eight, uh, yes, for a deferral of one meeting, uh, 32 no's, is that right, Madam Clerk? Yes. 32 no's, zero abstentions. So the motion to uh, defer one meeting fails. So I'm gonna go to um, Council Member Welsh who had the next motion. Council Member Welsh, you're recognized.
Councilmember Welsh, you're still on mute. Thank you, Please. I sure was. Um, I would like to move that we approve Lauren Riley as the new Metro Auditor. Second. All right. So I have a motion to approve Lauren Riley as the new Metropolitan Auditor. It's been seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion. Got a couple people in the queue. Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Sorry, I, that disregard that. Okay. Council Member Henderson, do you wish to be recognized? I do, Vice Mayor. Um, thank you. I, I just wanted to um, make uh, some suggestions in the context of this approval uh, to the audit committee. Um, I think I would appreciate going forward from a procedural standpoint um, if uh, the council could just receive um, an update from the committee. I absolutely recognize it is an interview process and there's confidentiality, but just understanding um, for the council body that this is in progress. Um, uh, the audit committee inviting the council um, to uh, submit uh, questions that might be helpful to the interview process for the audit committee. And vice mayor, uh, respectfully, I would also suggest that um, when we have uh, an administration transition or um, uh, with the council body, um, that it would behoove us as a body if um, uh, we were to have uh, uh, one returning member as a member of the audit committee um, and uh, uh, you know one new member. I respect and appreciate Councilman Druffel and Ms. Suara uh, immensely, um, especially Councilor Suarez's uh, skill set in in this um, in this space, and I just want to reiterate how much I respect uh, the, the the committee and everyone who applied. Um, but I think this is such a key function for the work that we do and the success of Metro government. Um, I just I just wanted to make uh, those suggestions respectfully because I think or two new council members perhaps not to be aware or have seen the previous um, uh, work of the audit committee and the council's engagement there. Um, I think that would inform um, uh, the, the vote and the process to have a returning uh, member uh, participating and for the body to be informed and be invited to submit some questions not saying that those have to be, you know, responded to specifically um, to that member, but more just to inform the process. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. Council Member Druffel, you're recognized. Yeah, I would just uh, add for those that have been on the audit committee, I think we've made some changes that create some teeth and follow up for those departments that maybe didn't have the best of audits. So um, I do think we've made some progress uh, directionally on process and holding departments accountable. Um, I won't get into all the details, but uh, uh, we do think we made some progress and doing some uh, positive things. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Bircher, you're recognized. Vice Mayor, I wanna be recorded as um, abstaining. Okay, all right, got it. Uh, Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. Um, thanks, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, just in following up on Council Member Henderson's comments, um, it, when we change um, terms and the two uh, new council members that are on um, the audit committee, um, I, I had extensive conversations with each one of them about the progress that um, now Mayor Cooper and I felt like we made in the last four years so there would be a continuity in continuing to move forward. Um, both the, our colleagues um, have touched base with me from time to time about the work on the audit committee um, to, to try to make sure that we had that continuity that Councilman Henderson um, at, uh, mentioned just now. The reality is that um, I think the um, efforts that uh, now Mayor Cooper and I put in on the audit committee are in large part why the former uh, Metro Auditor resigned and went to a different city. Um, we share the skepticism that Com Council Member Henderson um, commented on. And the only reason that um, there is, wasn't an auditor picked last term was because um, th those of us on the audit committee were being really real sticklers about what we wanted to see out of the next Metro Auditor. 
Then after the August election, um, now Mayor Cooper backed out of the interview process because he thought it was a bad look to participate in picking the auditor that would be auditing his administration. And frankly, the whole thing uh, slowed down for several months while we got new people up to speed. Um, knowing um, uh, the history of the interview process, knowing how much um, effort I put in uh, with our new colleagues um, to make sure we had a smooth transition, I've got confidence um, in this pick. My criticism of the previous um, auditor was really at the leadership level and not at the staff level. I thought there was a, a, a lot of excellent work at the staff level. And um, I just wanted to add that extra commentary about the, um, the efforts that were made to make sure there was a smooth transition and to say that I've got confidence in this pick. All right, thank you, Councilmember Mendez. Um, Council Member Swope. Previous question. A uh, previous question has been called. We're on the previous question. We'll try this again by voice vote. We're not voting on the motion, just on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question, uh, say aye. 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 All right. All those opposed, say no. Any abstentions? So we now have 40 members voting. So uh, 40 members voted aye on the previous question, zero voted no, and zero voted, uh, there were no abstentions. Any corrections on that? Okay, 40 to zero to zero. We are on the motion to approve Lauren Riley as the Metropolitan Auditor. We'll try to do this by voice vote. We have to take a roll call vote on this. Let's, let's do a voice vote, and then if there are any no's or abstentions, we can use the raise hand. Okay. All right. So we are going to try to do this by voice vote. Um, the motion is to select Lauren Riley as the new Metropolitan Auditor. All those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Council Member Bircher? I'm abstaining. I don't even know who she is. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right. So, um, Vice so Mayor, I'm abstaining as well. That's why I clicked my raise hand Council button. Henderson. Councilman okay. Henderson. Any other abstentions? Councilman Bradford is so, abstaining. Okay. Anyone else? Bradford. So I've got 37 ayes, zero noes, and three abstentions. Is there any correction to that vote? We had three abstentions. It was Bradford, Bircher, and Henderson. Ooh. Ooh, any, uh, any corrections to that vote? 37 to zero to three, uh, Lauren Riley, has been selected as our new Metropolitan Auditor. Congratulations to Ms. Riley. All right. Mayor. Any comments? Yes, yes, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Council Member Suara. Yes, sir. I uh, just yeah. want to make a quick comment. Uh, I want to thank Council Lady Anderson for, for the recommendation, but I also wanted to throw it out to the Council that one of the reasons why we keep stressing that the internal audit department is independent is that they do not report to the administration, but instead they report to the audit oh, and so if there are any lingering issues from the past or things that could be done, today, uh, not just for the IRM process, but for the process as a whole, I would strongly encourage uh, my colleagues to, to bring that to the attention of the audit committee because we want to make it work. We want to make sure everybody's working for the uh, for the county. So I want to throw that out there. The audit committee has jurisdiction and can hire fire and can also uh, make recommendations to the department. So if we would do that, I think uh, that would be great. In addition to what is already suggested. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Suara. Uh, please remember to mute your microphone uh, unless some of you uh, sounds like you're under the age of 10. So uh, please remember to mute your microphones. 
All right, so we are now on to the rest of elections and confirmations. Council Member Rosenberg, you are recognized. Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. There you are. Hey, uh, first up, we have the Action Commission, the reappointment of Dr. Bertina Nabal McKinney for a term expiring February 2nd, 2023. The Rules Committee voted to approve, six in favor, none against, and I move approval. All right, so I have a motion to approve Dr. Bertina Nabal uh, McKinney for a term expiring February 2nd, 2023 for the Action Commission, properly seconded. Any discussion? I'm checking, seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So uh, the reappointment of Dr. Uh, Nabal McKinney is uh, voted uh, 44, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that? All right, so that reappointment is made. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg, it might be easier <coughs> uh, to go through the rest of them and let us know uh, if anybody was not able to be approved tonight, and then we'll make one vote at the, at the end, okay? Okay. Sure. Um, well, in that case, I'm going to skip to uh, the Stormwater Management Committee, the appointment of Ms. Margaret Littman for a term expiring October 31st, 2023. Uh, the Rules Committee voted to approve Ms. Littman, six in favor, none against. Since then, a potential charter issue has come up. Um, so after speaking with Mr. Cooper, I would move to defer that appointment one meeting. All right, so uh, the, motion, the motion is to defer that one meeting. Um, and that's for the Stormwater Management Committee, Ms. Margaret Littman. Uh, the motion is to defer one meeting properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed say no. Any abstentions? Motion to defer one meeting is approved 44, zero against, zero abstentions. Any corrections to that vote? And it's 40, zero, 40 to zero to zero. The motion to defer Stormwater Management Committee is uh, deferred one meeting, Ms. Margaret Littman. All right, Councilman Rosenberg, you recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for the Airport Authority, we have the reappointment of Mr. William Freeman for a term expiring January 1st. 2024 to the Arts Commission, the appointment of Ms. Marianne Bird for a term expiring January 1st, 2024. And for the Zoning Appeals Board, an appointment of Mr. Logan Newton for a term expiring February 26th, 2023, filling the unexpired term of Ms. Cynthia Chappell. A Rules Committee voted six in favor, none against on all three of those appointments, and I move approval of all three. I got All right, thank you. And I got a second. So it's a motion to approve uh, Mr. William Freeman for the Airport Authority, Ms. Marion Bird for the Arts Commission, and Mr. Logan Newton for the Zoning Appeals Board. That's the motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Uh, Council Member Nash, you're recognized. I just uh, I wanted to uh, let the Council know that I've, I've known Logan Newton now for the past four years uh, he's uh, was instrumental in the construction remodeling of mcmurray school he's been very active in the uh, mcmurray hills neighborhood association he's been very helpful when we get to discussing codes and zoning issues he's a great pick and uh, we appreciate your vote all right thank you council member nash any other discussion seeing none we're ready to vote uh all in favor say aye Aye. 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 Opposed, Aye. no. Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Uh, the vote for those three are 44, zero against, zero abstentions. 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? 
Then the motion is approved. Uh, Mr. William Freeman is reappointed to the Airport Authority. Ms. Marion Bird is uh, appointed to the Arts Commission. And Mr. Logan Newton is appointed to the Zoning Appeals Board. And we had a reappointment of Dr. Bethina Nabah McKinney uh, to the Action Committee. Um, we do appreciate them uh, being willing to serve. Thank you for your service on behalf of Nashville and Davidson County. All right, we now move on to resolutions, the consent agenda resolutions and resolutions. I'm gonna um, go through the resolutions that are on the consent agenda. I'm gonna go through them slowly. Um, if I miss something, let me know. So um, I'm on page two of my agenda. Um, well, we'll make it easy. I think there's only two that are not on the consent agenda. Resolution RS 2020-202, the first one is not on the consent agenda. RS 2020-202, the first bill on the consent agenda is not on the consent agenda. And resolution RS 2020-288, that's on page four of my calendar. It's the third to the last resolution. That is also not on the consent agenda. Everything else is on the consent agenda. Anything that needs to be bumped off the consent agenda? Uh, Council Member Virtue, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like RS 2020-276 to be bumped off the consent agenda. All right, RS 2020-276 is bumped off the consent agenda. Council Member Nash, do you want to be recognized? I, I do not, sorry. Okay, uh, your hand is up, that's why I'm, I'm yes, checking. Yes. Sorry. All right, so we've got three bit, three resolutions off the consent agenda, uh, 202, 276, and 288. Anything else? All right, seeing none, start reading the consent agenda items. Resolution RS 2020, 273 by Council Members Mendez, Murphy, and others. Resolution declaring surplus and approving the disposition of certain parcels of real property in accordance with section 2.24.050G of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Resolution RS 2020-274 by Mendes Hager and others. Resolution accepting a grant from the State of Tennessee, Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Arts Commission for funding to nonprofit organizations to nurture artists, arts organizations, and art supporters in Davidson County. Resolution RS 2020 by Mendes Hager and others. Uh, resolution approving amendment one to a grant from the state of Tennessee, Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Arts Commission for general operating support to cover programs and direct expenses related to well-established Tennessee arts organizations. Uh, RS 2020 by Mendes Hurt and Welch. Resolution accepting a grant from the state of Tennessee Department of Health to the Metropolitan Government acting by through the Metropolitan Board of Health to provide the community health access and navigation in Tennessee referred to as the CHANT program to deliver comprehensive care coordination services to eligible families and children. Resolution RS 2020-278 by Hurt and Welsh. Resolution approving a contract between the Metropolitan Government of Nashville acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and Meharry Medical College. Uh, Department of Family and Community Medicine to provide clinical experience opportunities for its resident physician. RS 2020-279 by Hurt and Welsh. Resolution approving a contract for the Baby and Me Tobacco Free Program between the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Metropolitan Board of Health and the Tennessee Department of Health to support a smoking cessation program providing counseling and non-cash voucher incentives to pregnant and postpartum women and eligible household members. Resolution RS 2020-280. Taylor Murphy and Henderson, resolution to amend ordinance number BL 2019-1565 to authorize the Metropolitan Government to abandon an existing water main and easement and to accept additional sanitary sewer main, sewer main holes and easements for four properties located on Spruce Street and 21st Avenue North. Resolution RS 2020-281 by Councilmember Mendez. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the property damage claim of Allstate Indemnity Company as the subrogate of Jamie Stroud against the Metropolitan Government in the amount of $21,555.58 that amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. Resolution RS 2020-282 by Council Member Mendez. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle personal injury claim 
of Rosalyn Rodriguez, a minor against the Metropolitan Government, in the amount of $35,000 that amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. Resolution RS 202283 by Sledge, Cash, and others. A resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the State of Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Metropolitan Government acting by and through the Department of Public Works for the resurfacing and repairing of 2.42 miles to 31st Avenue South, Lakemore Avenue, and Wedgwood Avenue. Resolution RS 2020-284 by O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Resolution authorizing 1221 Investment Partners, LLC, to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 1221 Broadway. Resolution RS 2020-285 by O'Connell, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Resolution authorizing River Bike of Tennessee, Inc. doing business as Honky Tonk, Harley Davidson, to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 203 Third Avenue South. Resolution RS-2022-86 by Allen O'Connell and others. Resolution requesting flexibility in rent and mortgage collection in the city of Nashville and supporting the moratorium on evictions and foreclosures to provide housing security in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Resolution RS-2022-87 by Hall. Resolution requesting the mayor's office and the Metropolitan Department of Public Health partner with Meharry Medical College to seek grant funding to track, study, and report on the impact of COVID-19 on minority and rural communities. Resolution RS-2020-289 by Councilmember Bradford. Resolution to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And the last resolution on the, um, uh, in the consent agenda, Resolution RS-2020-290 by O'Connell and Allen. A resolution recognizing International Dark Skies Week and declaring April 19th to the 26th, 2020 as Dark Skies Week in Nashville and Davidson County. Um, those are the resolutions. Do I need to bump anything? Councilmember Virtue, your hand is still up. I'm just making sure. Did you need to be recognized? Okay, it's off. All right, thank you. All right, so um, we're now going to go to um, uh, the consent agenda committee reports. So I'll start with Councilmember Mendez. You're recognized for budget and finance. For budget and finance, the following uh, consent agenda items are considered RS 2020 273. 274, 275, 277, 281, 282, 283. For each, the vote was to recommend approval, 11 in favor and zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Mendez. Council Member Hurt, you recognize for health and hospitals. Thank you, Mr. President. Health, hospitals, and social services voted for resolution 2020 277, 278. 279 and 287, seven in favor and zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Hurt. Council Member Hager, Parks and Library. Resolution 2020-274 was approved, seven four, zero against. Resolution RS 2020-275 was approved, seven four, zero against. And that's it. Um, that's, that's it. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Murphy, Planning and Zoning. Resolution 2020 273, 14 in favor, zero against. Resolution 2020 280, 14 in favor, zero against. Resolution 2020 284, 14 in favor, zero against. Resolution 2020 285, 14 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Council Member Henderson, Public Works. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, the Public Works Committee recommended approval for resolutions 283, 280, 284, and 285, 12 in favor, zero against on all four. All right, so you had uh, 2020, 280, um, right? 280, 283, 284, and 285. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. And uh, last but not least, rules and confirmations, Council Member Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. On 286, 289, and 290, rules voted four in favor, none against, and I move approval of the consent agenda. All right, so I got a count, I got a, a motion to approve all resolutions on the consent agenda. It's properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, we're voting on the consent agenda. All in favor of the consent agenda say aye. 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 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? Say no. Any abstentions? Vote is forty-four to zero against. Zero abstentions. Forty to zero to zero. Any corrections? Consent agenda passes. We are now back on resolution R is 2020-202 by Councilmember Mendes, Murphy, and others. Resolution approving an intergovernment agreement by and between the state of Tennessee, Department of Transportation, and the Metropolitan Government acting and by acting by and through the Metropolitan Department of Public Works for signal maintenance for I-440 traffic operational deployment of blue toad spectra power over ether Ethernet. Uh, Councilmember Mendes, you are recognized. Budget and finance recommended a one meeting deferral, um, seven in favor, four against, and I believe there's one more committee report. Okay, uh, uh, planning and zoning, uh, it was re-referred to you, Councilmember Murphy. We have voted to approve this several times, including today, which was 14 in favor, zero against. Okay, uh, it was disapproved by and re-referred to the Public Works Committee. Councilmember Henderson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, following up uh, Budget and Finance Committee, uh, the Public Works Committee um, moved a one meeting deferral as well, uh, like Council Lady uh, um, uh, Murphy mentioned, we, we have discussed this many times, so I hope we'll have sufficient information in next meeting um, so that all three committees can be in alignment and move forward. It, the vote was 12 in favor, zero against a one meeting deferral. All right, thank you. And it was also referred to traffic and parking. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, more or less in deference to the work that was being done in the Public Works Committee, uh, we voted to approve. Um, and I, I, I guess, well, I'll, I'll get to discussion later, but yeah, we voted to approve four in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. All right, so those are the committee reports, Council Member Mendes. I'd like to move a one meeting deferral with a brief explanation. All right, Councilor Mendes moves a one meeting deferral is properly seconded. Back to you. Um, the only thing I would add is at this point, um, multiple committees have talked about this um, seemingly a, a million times. And I would, I would strongly, strongly encourage everybody that if you have any remaining questions on this, please um, put them in writing to um, Director Cooper by the end of the week, at least speaking for the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, we, we're, we're down to uh, a known number of people with a known number of objections, and uh, please submit any questions uh, by the end of this week so they can be anticipated and answered at the next meeting, and we can finally pass this or not pass this. Um, so with that, we renew the motion to defer. All right, so it's a motion to defer one meeting. Uh, I've got two people in the queue. Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to add uh, remarks to Councilman Mendez's and in, invite the, the larger body. Um, there have been quite a lot of emails uh, with questions uh, and answers being sent. Um, most recently, four letters uh, sent by John Cooper uh, on Monday in your inbox from TDOT, Vanderbilt, Metro Public Works. Um, so I would encourage um, members of the body to please look at the emails about this that you have been sent answering previous questions and the various letters. If after reviewing all of that and the analysis, you still have questions, which would be surprising at this point, but if you do, then direct those to, to Councilman Cooper. I, I, I feel strongly that um, to Mr. Mendez's point, um, there are kind of some, some known larger objections that are understood and heard, um, but that uh, some of the, uh, the majority of the questions um, have been previously answered and consolidated um, uh, for the council's review. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Henderson. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I think maybe to that point, I, I did not follow the entirety of the budget and finance discussion. I might ask uh, Chair of Budget and Finance uh, to speak to the nature of this deferral. Is this because more questions emerged in committee uh, than we than, than the committee felt they had time to get from staff or that staff could get from the vendor? I mean, are we, are we expecting there to be more information provided between uh, this meeting and next in order to, to get this resolved. Councilor Mendez. Um, thanks for that question. I, I'm gonna attempt to um, 
give a, a fair answer. I, I'm personally in favor of it, uh, but uh, to answer the question about the committee, the, the new questions to my ear um, uh, had to do with not about how it works from an engineering perspective or not about how it works from a money perspective um, or finance perspective, but really from a IT perspective to figure out whether there were uh, less intrusive means that were available from a technical IT perspective. And the request from a couple of members of the committee was to have somebody from the company come back um, to be able to describe that. And I also heard a question about possibly hearing from ICS um, inside of Metro about whether there were other alternatives. To my ear, those were the nature of the new questions. And again, I'm hoping council members and reduce those to writing so there can be appropriate people show up at the next committee meeting to answer the questions. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I, yeah, I think that satisfies me. I can support a one meeting deferral. I know that um, I will say I really appreciate both Public Works and TDOT and even honestly Vanderbilt, which is doing a pilot on their campus. Uh, I've had interactions with all three, I've, uh, you know, Public Works Committee did have an opportunity, even dating back to last term, uh, to interact with the vendor. Uh, and I feel like we have made a lot of progress, some of it even in the past couple of weeks. So I'm I'm comfortable with one meeting deferral, but to to the chair of budget and finances here, um, you know, at some point we just need to go ahead and decide whether this is the right approach for national. Okay. Thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Let me see if anybody else is in the queue. See nobody else in the queue. The motion is to defer one meeting. It's been properly seconded. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to defer one meeting, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Any abstentions? Vote is 44, zero against, zero abstentions to defer one meeting, 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections? Uh, the resolution RS-2020-202 is deferred one meeting. We're on resolution RS-2020-276 by Councilmember Mendez. Resolution authorizing the Metropolitan Department of Law to compromise and settle the claim of Shondell Brooks individually and as next of kin to Aquila Da Silva against the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County in the amount of $35,000, said amount to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. Councilor Mendez, you're recognized. The committee report from budget and finance for this one is 11 in favor and zero against. And with that, I'd like to move approval of the brief explanation. All right, so um, it's a, a motion to, um, to approve, properly seconded. Back to you. Um, I just want to thank Councilmember Bircher for her uh, passionate attention to this matter over the last um, year, and uh, I'm sure she's got her hand raised. Okay, she has got her hand raised. Uh, Councilmember Bircher, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor, and thank you so much, uh, uh, Chair Mendez. I just want to begin by stating uh, April 22nd, 20, uh, 2018, at 3.24 a.m., um, our community, our city, and many family lives was forever changed on this day. We are actually on the eve of this mass shooting, and uh, I just want us to make sure that we always remember Joe Perez, Aquila Da Silva, Torian Sandlin, the Ebony Graves, and all the survivors. The acknowledgement of significant errors, 42 seconds, not only provides some comfort and path for healing for all the families, but hopefully to a better pathway for policy and delivery of services so that our community and no other family has to undergo such a process. So on behalf of the family, I want to thank this body for understanding that it was never about the money, but ensuring that these lives will forever have meaning. And again, this won't happen again to any other family, Vice Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman Bircher. Thank you for your work on this. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I would also like to uh, commend Councilmember Vircher for her diligence in this. And this is actually about two things, right? This is ultimately a settlement, which is important to the family, um, as as you know, seek anything 
that can even close to amounting to justice. But this is also ultimately about Metro and our operations, right? In the recitals is an item that speaks to the need for some potential reforms at our com emergency communication center. And I hope that this council takes seriously the need for, um, for reviewing that because we have not really had, to my knowledge, any serious publicly transparent uh, accountability process for how 911 functions in this city in an effort to assure all Nashvillians that we can keep one another safe in times of crisis and emergency. So I hope uh, that this settlement is not the end of the story and that we uh, recommit ourselves to a process of ensuring that 911 is. All right, thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Um, anybody else wish to be heard? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we're voting on resolution RS 2020 276 by Council Member Mendez. Uh, the motion is to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? The vote is 44, zero against, zero abstentions on resolution RS 2020 276. 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections? Motion passes. Um, the last um, resolution on um, our resolution calendar is resolution RS 2020 288 by Councilmember Stiles, Johnston, and others. Resolution honoring the response of the Nashville Electric Service, Metro, Metro, Metropolitan Water Service Department, and the Metropolitan Public Works Department after the March 3rd, 2020 tornado. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Uh, it is uh, Public Works, Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, we recommended approval as substituted, 11 in favor, zero against, and one abstention. Okay. Uh, Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. I'd like to move for approval as substituted. Substitute. Okay, so uh, Council Member Stiles has moved the substitute properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the substitute. So after we put the resolution together, it was brought to my attention the, the efforts of codes as well and how they had gone and inspected 2,000 homes within the first 48 hours. And so I wanted to be sure that we included them and in, in being grateful to their service as well. Okay, so the substitute adds uh, the, the coach department to the uh, resolution. Um, it's, uh, that's the substitute. Substitute has been moved, properly seconded. Any discussion about the substitute? I see Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Council Member Hurt, do you wish to be recognized? All right, Council Member Bircher, your, um, okay. Uh, Council Member Bircher, your hand is still raised. You wish to be recognized? Council Member Young, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I think this is, of course, a great resolution, and I'm glad we're doing this for our employees. But I would just ask that all of my colleagues remember how great our employees are and that uh, when we approach the budget process, we remember a resolution like this. and not just say nice things, but that we do nice things. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Young. Councilmember Hurt, your uh, hand is raised a second time. You're recognized. Well, you cut me off the first time when I was trying to speak. I'm so, sorry, I didn't, I thought you had just, you moved your hand and I thought maybe you didn't want to speak. You're recognized. No, no, I, I wanted to say that I was the one that abstained in public works and it's only because I think we should recognize all of the departments that stepped up. It, it wasn't just one or several, and just like we had to go back and do the substitute to add in codes, I just wanted to see something done for all of the departments and not just, you know, a select few. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. Um, I, uh, Councilman Porterfield, you're recognized. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to uh, second what uh, Council Member Young said. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, I think that takes care of everybody in the queue. We're on resolution RS-2020-288. We're on the substitute. Um, let's get the substitute on. Uh, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. 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 Opposed no. Opposed no. Any abstentions? Council Member Hurt, do you wish to be uh, recognized for an abstention? No, I'll, I'll vote for it because I am for it. It's just that I wanted to make sure that all the departments were recognized. Okay. All right. That's what I need to know. Okay. So um, the substitute is approved 44 0 against 0 abstentions, 40 to 0 0. Any corrections on that? Okay, that's the, the vote on the substitute. Council Member Stiles, we're now on your resolution as substituted. Uh, you're recognized. Yes, I move to approve the substitute. Okay, so there's a motion to approve, properly seconded. We're on resolution RS 2020 288 as substitute. Um, I don't see anybody in the queue that hadn't already spoken. I've got Council Member Young and Council Member Hurt. Do you wish to be recognized again? You see it. I see a hand off, Council Member Hurt, hand off. Let's see, I see no one else. We're ready to vote. Resolution RS 2020-288 is substituted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Vote is 44, zero against, zero abstentions. 40 to zero to zero, any corrections to that? Resolution RS 2020-288, a substitute passes. All right, we are now on bills on uh, first reading, introduction to first reading. Um, and we'll take all these together, there's no objection. We'll consider all the ordinances on first reading in one vote at this time. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Got a motion to adopt and a proper okay. second. Any discussion on bills on first reading? I'm gonna pass them in uh, together. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Any abstentions? Vote on bills on first reading 44, zero against, zero abstentions, 40 to zero, zero. Any corrections? That's the vote. All those bills pass on first reading. We had one late filed bill by council member Stiles. Um, and this had to do with employees of essential businesses. Employees on essential businesses. Having their employees wear, oh, wear, wear masks. That's right. So council member Stiles, you're recognized to explain your late file bill. Thank you, vice mayor. I submitted this bill because I had seen in, in being out several employees at essential businesses, specifically grocery stores, without any uh, facial coverings. Some employees had some, some didn't. And as they are our frontline workers and they're interacting on a daily basis right now, they should be protected. And so if you look at the bill, it does stipulate that employers would be responsible for any punitive measures because they were not covering their employees. There are several ways right now that people can obtain masks. I know PPE is in short supply, but we cannot leave our frontline workers unprotected in the meantime while we're waiting for a supply to come in. So Hands On Nashville is making masks. Uh, there are other organizations as well in town, and I think it's incumbent upon those individuals, the employers, to make sure that people are covered in the meantime. All right, so um, so Council uh, Member Stiles has a late filed bill to get on uh, for first reading. Um, Council Member Stiles, you're going to have to um, um, move for a suspension of the rules to get it on the calendar. Okay. I move to suspend the rules, please. All right, so there's a, a motion to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? 
If so, either unmute your phone or show your hands on the board. I'm checking, I see no suspension. I, I see no uh, hands raised concerning the suspension. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized on your bill uh, to move for passage on first reading. Uh, yes, I move for passage on first reading, please. Vice Mayor, okay, thank you. Got a motion to approve her bill on first reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Councilmember Porterfield, you're recognized. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor, and uh, thank you so much, Councilwoman Stiles, for um, your leadership on this and for taking uh, concerns for our um, essential employees in the city. My question was, does this require the mass uh, be provided by the employers or does this put the burden on the employees to provide their own mask? So Council Member Stiles, I recognize you. Council Member um, Porterfield, this bill is just on first reading. It'll go to the committees, but um, I'll go ahead and let Council Member Stiles answer your question. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and thank you, Council Member Porterfield. The mask that I was referring to when I was uh, giving my introduction Many of those are, are free, so it is of no cost to anyone. If an employer is not supplying a mask of some sort, then you would be able to reach out and get a mask for free. So at least you have something covering your face and at no cost. But again, the employer will be penalized if the employees don't have something on. All right, Council Member Porterfield. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Lee, you're recognized. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, Council Lady Stiles, I would like to say, and I know that this is on first reading, but I would like to say thank you so very much for putting this in. Um, I, too, went to a grocery store in our area, and not only did they not have masks on, but they did not have gloves on. And I was told by a manager that they didn't have to wear them. So my question is, in, in the wording of this, is, does it also cover having protection on your hands, wearing gloves, or is that an amendment or something that could be added to it? Or what do you think about that? Council Member Stiles. Thank you, Vice Mayor. And thank you, Council Member Lee, for your question. So the bill was done in accordance to the CDC guidelines, which only contains mask does not contain gloves. And that is why it wasn't included. I initially thought the same thing. Vice Mayor. Councilor Lee. Thank you so very much. Um, I do think that since these are essential areas of businesses that they should lead by, lead by example. So I would hope that the answer, we're not required to wear any of these will not come out again. And thank you so very much again for you putting this forth. Thank you. All right, Councilmember Glover. Just quickly, um, when this gets assigned, because obviously it was late filed, uh, I want to I want to keep an eye on this because, as you know, the Small Business Task Force is working with the Mayor's Office and uh, Department of Health and and others. Uh, so I'm not sure which committees this is going to go to or how this is actually going to be enacted, et cetera. But I would just like to make sure that we are aware of it in order to uh, uh, try and make sure we encompass all that that this may have in it. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Council Member Glover. All right. So the motion is to approve um, what is a late file bill by Council Member Stiles on first reading. Uh, I see I nobody see. else in the queue. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, yes, this is Council Member Stiles. I, I wanted to say something to uh, Council Member Glover, if I may, in response to what so, he's you want, is it a, Is it about your bill? It is. It is. All right, so we just passed it.
We just passed on first reading. We're not, it'll go to a committee. Is there something you need to tell the, the council? It's, we're off the I, bill I just now. wanted to say, I just, I just wanted to say th thank you for including and wanting to be a part of following this bill, making sure that small businesses were paying attention and hopefully eventually participating. That's it. All right. Thank you, thank you. Council Member Stiles. Okay, we're now, we now move to bills on second reading. Um, so we actually have a consent agenda. <laughs> we'll go through those, uh, make sure, listen carefully because there's a mixture of these. Uh, again, these are bills on second reading on a consent agenda. Um, so I'm gonna go through them very slowly. Um, bills on second reading, uh, BL 2020-196 is on consent. 2022-25 uh, is on consent. 228 is on consent. 229 on consent. 231 on consent. 238 on consent. 239 on consent. 240 on consent. 241 on consent. 242 on consent. 243 on consent. 244 on consent. 245 on consent. 246 on consent. 248 on consent. 249 on consent. 250 on consent. 251 on consent and 252 on consent. I'm gonna go back over those to make sure we've got this correct. Okay. So I'm on back on page six, right at the beginning of bills on second reading, 2020-196 on consent, 225 on consent, 228 on consent, 229 on consent, 231 on consent, and then starting with 238 through 242, all the way through 246 on consent. And then we start back with 248 and all the way through 252. That Those bills are on the consent calendar for second reading. All right, any objections to that? Okay, so I'll go through them and read the captions. If there's a problem, let me know after I finish reading. Uh, bills on second reading. <clears throat> this is BL 2020-196 by Pulley. Ordinance to amend Title IX of the Metropolitan Code of Laws relative to noise. BL 2020-225 by Council Member Hager. Ordinance amending Section 3.24.400 of the Code, Metropolitan Code regarding the landing of parachutes on parks property in conjunction with the Tennessee Women's Suffrage Centennial Celebration. BL 2020-228 by Murphy Henderson and others, ordinance to amend the GIS systems, uh, street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County by abandoning portions of Collins Park Drive right of way. BL 2020-229 by Sledge Murphy and others, ordinance to amend the geographic information system, street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by abandoning a portion of Merritt Avenue right of way between Hagen Street and the railroad right of way. Uh, BL 2020-231 by Murphy Henderson and O'Connell, ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by abandoning a portion of alley number 2005 right of way from the dead end south of Fern Avenue to the dead end north of Fern Avenue. Uh, BL 2020-238 by Mendes Murphy, Ordinance approving a lease agreement between the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County and Midwest Communications, Inc. for real property located at 8072 Old Charlotte Pike. BL 2020-239, Sledge, Mendes, and others. Ordinance of authorizing the granting of permanent and temporary construction easements to Branbury Hill Apartments, LLC on a parcel of property owned by the Metropolitan Government. BL 2020-240, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government of National and Davidson County to abandon existing easement rights located at 804 4th Avenue South, formerly a portion of alley number 147, BL 2020-241, Bully, Murphy, and Henderson, ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to negotiate and accept permanent temporary easements for the Ackerman Court Stormwater Improvement Project for 37 properties located along Ackerman Court, Dodge Court, Grandview Drive, Granny White Pike, 
Graybar Lane and Leland Lane, BL 202242, Mendes, Henderson, and Allen. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government acting by through the Metropolitan Department of Water and Sewer Services to enter into an agreement with Cumberland River Compact to continue to fund initiatives to establish this result of the consent decree with the Department of Justice of the United States and the State of Tennessee. <clears throat> BL 202243 by Johnston, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer man mains and sanitary, sanitary sewer manholes for property located at Wallace Road, unnumbered. 202244, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept water mains, a fire hydrant assembly, a sanitary sewer manhole, and easements for property located at 1501 Herman Street. BL 202245, Rutherford, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new water mains and easements for property located at 6820 Nolensville Pike and 7115 South Point Parkway, BL 202246 by Lee Murphy and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer force mains, sanitary sewer manholes and easements, and to accept new water san and sanitary sewer mains and force mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 4309 Maxwell Road. BL 202248, O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government <clears throat> to abandon existing brick sanitary sewer mains and easements and to accept new sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for properties located at 1206 and 1212 Ninth Avenue North. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> BL 202249 by Johnston, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements. For prop, four properties located on Nolensville Pike, Bill 202250, Rutherford, Murth Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davis County to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, a fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for properties located at 6424 and 6434 Pettis Road. Bill 202251, Lee, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements. For property located at Hamilton Church Road, unnumbered, also known as Timber Trails Phase Two, and BL 2020 250, 252, Pledge Murphy and Henderson ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 522, 524, and 526 Southgate Avenue, also known, known as Southgate Station Phase Two. Uh, those are all the bills on. Second reading on the consent calendar. Any problems, anything that needs to be bumped? So checking, seeing none. We're ready for agenda committee reports. Uh, Council Member Mendes, uh, you're recognized for budget and finance. There are three budget and finance um, matters on the consent for second reading. Um, they are <clears throat> BL 2020 238, 239, and 242. All three of those were recommended for approval by the committee, 11 in favor and zero against. All right, thank you. Codes, Fair and Farmer's Market, Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We have one item that's on the consent agenda, Bill 2021-96 was approved, eight in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Hager, Parks, Library and Arts. Council Member Hager. Moved to approve 740 again. It was BL 2022-25, correct? Hang on. Yes. All right, thank you. Zero again. Thank All right, you. Council Member Murphy, planning and zoning. Thank you. BL 2020, wait, wait, wait. Um, BL 2022 BL 2022-2-8, BL 2022-2-9, BL 2022-3-1, BL 2022-3-8, 2-3-9, 2-40, 2-41, 2-43, 2-44, 2-45, 2-46, 2-48, 2-49, 2-50, 2-51, 2-52, all were approved, 14 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Councilmember Murphy. 
Uh, Council Member Henderson, Public Works. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Public Works Committee recommends approval on uh, BL 2020-228, 229, 231, 241, 242, 243, 244, 245, 246, 247, 248, 249, 250, 251, and 252. All 12 in favor, 0 against. All right. Thank you, Council Member Henderson. Uh, traffic and parking, Council Member O'Connell. <laughs> Uh, uh, we're, we're, um, you're breaking up. Try it again. Council Member O'Connell. Mr. President, are you able to hear me? Yeah, now we've got you. Okay, I can, I can hear you clearly, so I just want to make sure my audio is coming through. We uh, got all right so um i'm going to try this i'm going to council member o'connell we're having trouble hearing you i'm going to go through the four that i've got uh if you can hear me and then you can let me know if we've got them right all right 228 229, 230, and 231, is that right? That is correct. Okay, there you are. What was the, can you tell me what the vote was? Uh, yes, we were in favor, uh, four in favor, zero against. Okay. All right. And I'm going to ask uh, Councilor Mendez, would you move approval of all the bills on second reading? So moved. Okay. okay. I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. So um, any discussion on any of the bills that were on second reading? Council Member Henderson, you recognize. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just as a point of clarification, I did not understand uh, Bill 230, uh, uh, Mr. Parker's bill to be on um, the consent agenda. Um, it, it was on our public works consent agenda, and so it was recommended for approval, 12 in favor, zero against, but I did not hear that among the ones you read for consent, but then uh, you just mentioned it to Councilman O'Connell, so I just wanted to clarify. All right, so it, it was bumped off the consent calendar, so it is not on there. I okay, think, um, so uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, there, were, there were four listed on my report, but 230, let me make sure I've got this, 228, 229 was on consent. 231, 230 was actually bumped off the consent calendar, okay? So, um, all right, so uh, we have a motion to approve properly seconded on bills on the consent, on the consent calendar on second reading. See nobody in the queue, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed, no? Any abstentions? Okay, bills on the second reading on the uh, consent calendar passes. Okay, 44, zero against, zero abstentions. 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections with that? Good. Okay, we go back to bills on second reading that were not on the consent calendar. I've got BL 2022-23 by Council Member Murphy. Ordinance amending section 7.16.110 of the Metropolitan Code to provide a mechanism for retail liquor establishments to obtain an exemption from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a certificate of compliance upon approval of the Metropolitan Council by resolution. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to uh, move to get the bill before us and then I'll move the amendment. Okay, uh, why don't you give us your committee report first and then we'll take up the amendment. Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, so planning, zoning and historical voted 14 in favor and zero against of the amendment and as of the bill as amended. All right. So, uh, okay. So Council Member Murphy, uh, you recognize for your amendment. 
I'd like to move the amendment. Okay, so um, there's a motion to uh, to uh, move for amendment properly seconded. Back to you for discussion of your amendment. Thank you. It is um, so in in the course of this uh, legislation being drafted. It this is more of a, a technical correction where the the applicant will be notifying the council member of their liquor uh, variance uh, rather than the Department of Law. Okay, you've heard the amendment. It was properly seconded. Discussion on the amendment. Councilmember Glover, you recognize. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would just like to try and understand what exactly this does versus what we've had. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, you want to be recognized or you want me to go to Mr. Cooper? Um, I'm happy to discuss the bill, but right now we're on the amendment. So I guess I'd like to, as I, I'd like to move the amendment, get the amendment um, on the bill as amended, and then I'm happy to answer questions and further discuss the bill and explain it. Councilmember Glover, would you mind waiting until we get the amendment on? Uh, that that's fine. Okay. All right. I see nobody else in the queue. The motion is to approve the amendment. Uh, it has been properly seconded. Nobody else in the queue on the amendment. All in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so it's 40 for the amendment, zero against, zero abstentions, 40 to zero, zero. Any corrections to that? Hearing none, Councilman Murphy, you're now on your bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So as we all know, because we've had them, we have them semi-frequently, um, a lot of times be beer retail um, vendors or, or stores will come before us because they need a, a variance because of the residential or playgrounds or what have you. Um, and so that's kind of a, a quote unquote escape mechanism, right? That they can go in front of the have a public hearing at the council and the council grant a waiver. So when it comes to liquor retailers, we do not have the same kind of setup. What has happened in the past is either um, the, 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 the site um, or the retail business has to file for an SP or some type of spot zoning. And so it's kind of piecemealed and patchworked. Um, and so I think that what what has been brought to me by a constituent um, looking to go into my district who didn't really want to have to rezone um, about a four acre property or go into an SP and all that. Um, when talking with one of the liquor attorneys and, and lobbyists, um, very well known around town, we figured, you know, the, the way we handle beer permits it, it works, um, it gives community input the way that they might not get um, through other types of options. And, and it's something we do routinely. It's a mechanism we already have in place. And so rather than encouraging spot zoning for, for these liquor establishment, retail establishments, um, this just simply sets up and mimics what we currently do for uh, the retail sale of, of beer. I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. Uh, Councilmember Glover, you're recognized. Yeah, so if you don't yeah. mind, uh, Vice Mayor, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Cooper, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the purpose of this because uh, does the license for the liquor store come from us or from the state? Mr. Cooper? The license comes from the state, but there is a requirement in state law that before you can get your license from the state alcoholic beverage commission, you have to get a certificate of compliance signed by the local mayor that says that the applicant is um, has the background check, doesn't have a felony record, and complies with all local uh, distance locational restrictions. And in our code, we do have some distance provisions that similar to what we have for um, restaurants and establishments selling beer. So that's, that's what the waiver would be for. The local portion 
of the um, the certificate of compliance. Councilman, and so, yeah, I'm I'm just going to ask Mr. Cooper one more question, if I may. So, sure. uh, if if we're doing this, it, it, it this sounds to me like. I'm trying to figure out, are, are we bypassing something that we really should should not be bypassing? Well, I mean, it, it, part of that's a more of a policy question, whether, whether to allow a waiver of the distance requirements or not. Um, from a legal standpoint, if, if the council started granting some waivers and denying other waivers for people who are in the in a similar situation arguably that could um, jeopardize the the distance requirement themselves um, but this waiver is is no different than the waiver we're currently doing for beer uh, applicants okay that's that I guess that was my question right there because they are having to come before us on, on the beer, and I'm, I'm just, uh, I couldn't make the meeting today because of other things, but I just didn't really understand the purpose of this and what the, uh, I guess, what the implications would be down the road. All right, thank you, Councilmember Glover. Councilmember yeah. Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I want to follow up on that a little. I mean, we, we treat beer and alcohol and beer and, and liquor licenses different for some reason. Is, um, maybe that's a question to Mr. Cooper. Can we explain what the, different, what the reason for having different treatment is? And is it is it appropriate to simply just now treat liquor licenses in the same way that we do beer, or, or do they need to have a higher standard? I think we, did you get that? I think so. Okay, um, Mr. Cooper. Part of the, as to whether a higher standard is needed, again, that's a, a policy question for the, for the council to make. Um, under state law, the, the general rule is beer regulation is local, liquor regulation is state. And, and that's the, the case here with liquor stores, but there is the one provision for the local certificate of compliance from the mayor that requires the mayor to certify that the applicant is, um, has met any distance or location restrictions that the local government has adopted. And so that's what the waiver would be for here. Councilmember Allen? Yeah, can I ask one other question? Um, since this is not in Division 17, is this amendable on third reading or only on second reading? It's only amendable on second reading. It's not an amendment to the zoning code. Okay, thank you. So then this would be a question to council member Murphy. Does this currently require a sign to go up or just notification to the council member? Councilor Murphy, I think that was directed to you. Um, you know, honestly, I am, I am, I would like uh, Mr. Cooper to confirm this. It was my understanding i don't have the bill um full language in front of me i'm just looking at the agenda it was my understanding that we basically are just replicating the again first want to clarify because there have been some misstatements here that this deals with their liquor license this has nothing to do with their li us issuing a liquor license metro does not do that secondly when this was drafted it was to just basically copy paste the process of the beer permits um of coming to council and having the hearing. And so Mr. Cooper, can you clarify that, that, that we did copy paste that part of it? Mr. Cooper. Yes, the procedure would be identical and it does require a sign and advertising in the newspaper, as well as written notices, I believe to um, applicants, uh, the surrounding properties to the applicants. Councilman Allen. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I just feel like it's, it's a slightly more, um, more intense use, and perhaps should have a slightly more intense set of rules. But I will continue to listen to other conversation. I appreciate you answering my question. Okay. Um, Council Member Pulley, you recognize? Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I didn't quite catch the answer. Did you, uh, Mr. Cooper? Did you say it's amendable on third reading or not, Mr. Cooper? It is not amendable on third reading without suspending the rules. 
Okay, got you. Um, it, and it's my understanding that uh, uh, if this bill is passed, then waivers would come before the Public Safety Committee. So uh, uh, I'm wondering if uh, the sponsor would entertain a uh, one meeting deferral uh, and have this referred to the Public Safety Committee so that we could take a look at this bill in as much as it would uh, uh, impact our committee. Councilor Mayor Murphy. Uh, I wonder why it was not assigned to your committee to begin with, why it was assigned to the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee. Um, I often wonder why different bills are assigned the way that they are, and that's probably something that maybe the Rules Committee could take up in the future. Um, I'm happy to run this through your committee. Um, uh, honestly, I think it was an oversight that it wasn't sent to your committee in the first place. Okay, well, I appreciate your, uh, your indulgence. So uh, that said, uh, I would uh, uh, move to defer this one meeting and refer it to the Public Safety Committee. Second. So I have a motion to defer one meeting and refer it to the uh, Public Safety Committee. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? <laughs> okay, we're on the motion to defer one meeting. All right, all those in favor of the deferral for one meeting, please say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Any abstentions? Motion to defer one meeting is passed 44, zero against, zero abstentions, 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections? Okay, bill is deferred one meeting. Um, BL 2020-224 by Council Member Taylor, Suara, and others. Ordinance command, amending Chapter 11.22 of the Metropolitan Code to require landlords to provide notice to tenants prior to a sale of the property. Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to defer this two meetings. Okay, why don't we get the planning um, committee oh, report? Sorry, yeah. or, committee reports yeah. from planning. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Council Member Murphy. Planning voted 14 in favor, zero against to defer this for two meetings. Okay, Council Member Taylor, you're recognized. Yes, thank you so much. Again, I would like to defer this for two meetings. Okay, second for two meetings, properly seconded. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral of two meetings, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion to defer two meetings is approved 44, zero against, zero abstentions, 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? Okay, that's the vote. Bill is deferred two meetings. Uh, BL 2020-226 by O'Connell and Swope. Ordinance to provide for the designation of public property within specified areas of downtown Nashville as a temporary special event zone during the time period between it beginning at 6 o'clock a.m. on June 3rd, 2020, ending at midnight, 12 o'clock on June 8th, 2020, relative to the use of these areas in conjunction with the 2020 CMA Fest and related activities and events. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Regrettably, I withdraw the bill. Okay, bill is withdrawn. Thank you, Council Member O'Connell. Uh, BL 2020 227. Uh, by council members Withers, Mendes, and others. Ordinance authorizing the granting of permanent and temporary construction easements to Piedmont Natural Gas Company on certain property owned by the Metropolitan Government. Council member Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get, could I get committee report, please? You certainly can. Council member Mendes, budget and finance. Budget and finance recommended approval 11 in favor, zero against. All right, Parks and Library, council member Hager, you're recognized. Who am I recognized for? Uh, you're recognized for being such a good council member, but also for the committee report on 227. Uh, 227 was the question. Well, second reading. Johnson. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. 227 was um, my request to sponsor the third two meetings, 7 4 0 against. All right, thank you, Planning and Zoning, Councilor Murphy. 
planning and zoning vote 14 in favor zero against to defer two meetings all right and public works council member henderson at the request of uh, the sponsor the public works committee recommends a two meeting deferral 12 in favor zero against all right thank you councilor weathers you're recognized thank you mr vice mayor i would like to request a two meeting deferral so that this will track with the parks board uh meetings themselves all right so the request is to defer two meetings properly seconded any discussion seeing none all those in favor say aye Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? No. Opposed? No. Any abstentions? Okay. 44, zero against, zero abstentions. Uh, the bill is deferred two meetings, 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? Motion is passed to defer two meetings. Uh, we're on BL 2020, 230. I'm on page seven of the calendar. Parker, Murphy, and others, ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan government by abandoning a portion of alley number 312 right of way from North 9th Street to alley number 278. Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. All right, planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. Thank you. We voted 14 in favor, zero against, to defer this to the second meeting in May. Okay. Uh, Public Works, Council Mayor Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Public Works Committee recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against. Okay. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, traffic and parking. Thank you, Mr. President. We, uh, we voted Four in favor, zero against to approve. Okay, Councilor Parker, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move to defer to two meetings. Okay, so the uh, the motion is to defer two meetings uh, to the second meeting in May. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Bills deferred two meetings, 44, zero against, uh, zero abstentions, 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? Uh, BL 2020 230 is deferred two meetings. All right, we're on BL 2020-232 by Council Member O'Connell, Murphy, and Henderson. Ordinance to amend the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by abandoning a portion of alley number 146 right away from Lafayette Street to Elm Street. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, planning and zoning, Council Member Murphy. We voted 14 in favor, zero against to defer this one meeting. Okay, uh, Public Works, Council Member Henderson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, uh, noticing a disapproval by the Traffic and Parking Commission, we put this on our agenda for discussion, and then at the request of the sponsor, we voted to defer one meeting, 12 in favor, zero against. Okay, thank you. Um, traffic, traffic and Parking, Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. We voted four in favor, zero against for a one meeting deferral. And as a result, I would like to move for a one meeting deferral with a brief explanation. All right, Councilmember O'Connell moves to defer one meeting properly. Seconded back to you, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I Unfortunately, I missed the Traffic and Parking Commission meeting where this item uh, was discussed and voted on uh, as a result of illness. And so I want to get a staff update uh, to un better understand it before we before I make any recommendations to colleagues here about whether it's worth pursuing. So I will I will do that before next meeting. Thank you. All right. So uh, the motion is to uh, defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion to defer one meeting, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Any abstentions? 
the motion is to the the motion to defer one meeting is approved 44 zero against zero abstentions 40 to zero to zero any corrections to that bill is deferred one meeting uh, BL 2020 234 by Council Member Syracuse, Suara, and others. Ordinance providing for the waiver of certain building permit fees for the repair or rebuilding of property damage as a result of the March 3rd, 2020 tornado. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. Uh, uh, he's coming up to the front because he's in the chamber. Council Member Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I have uh, our committee reports. Committee reports, budget and finance, Councilor Mendez. Uh, budget and finance uh, considered an amendment and a recommended approval, 11 in favor, zero against, and also recommended approval of the bill as amended, 11 in favor and zero against. All right, thank you. Codes and fair and farmer's market, council member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We also considered the amendment and we recommended approval of the amendment, 840 against. We also recommended the bill as amended, 840 against. All right, thank you, Councilor Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, move the amendment, please. Okay, so I got a motion to move the amendment, properly seconded, back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Thank you, so the amendment is basically an affidavit. Um, the, the, the comparison of difference between the uh, May 2010 flood and this uh, tornado is that most people did not have flood insurance uh, back in 2010, but um, most, hopefully, have uh, property insurance. Uh, to help with the, the, the tornado. Um, within the, 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 a lot of those policies, um, uh, reimbursements um, of the uh, permit fees are, are sometimes included. Uh, so this amendment is an affidavit for the applicants uh, would have to uh, certify that they cannot get reimbursement through their insurance policy um, for those permit fees. Okay. Uh, the all right, so you've heard an explanation of the amendment. It's been properly seconded. I'm checking the board. Seeing nobody on the board. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Many abstentions. Amendment passes 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, Councilor Syracuse, you're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move as amended. Okay, motion to uh, move 2020-234 on second reading as amended, properly seconded. Um, any discussion? Seeing nobody in the queue. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, opposed no. Any abstentions? Uh, the bill is passed as amended on second reading 44, zero against, zero abstentions. 40 to zero, zero, any corrections to that? That's the vote, 40 to zero to zero. Um, BL 2020-235 by Council Member Mendes, Henderson and others. Ordinance amending Metropolitan Code section 2.62.040F and Metropolitan Code Section 12.56.170 to increase special event permit fees. Councilor Mendes, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. Vice Mayor. The uh, Budget and Finance Committee recommended approval of this 11 favor, zero against, and I request uh, the Public Works Committee report. Public Works Committee, Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Bye. Mayor. Um, after uh, some questions and having heard some of the questions that came up at Budget and Finance Committee, um, Public Works Committee recommended deferral of one meeting, 12 in favor, zero against. Okay, it's an automatic deferral? Yes. Okay, so it's automatically deferred one meeting. All right, thank you, Council Member Henderson. Okay, automatic deferral one meeting. BL 2020-236 by Council Member Sledge. Ordinance to amend Chapter 15.64 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws regarding work time restrictions for grading permits. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Public Works, Council Member Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, at the request of the sponsor, uh, Public Works recommended a one meeting deferral, 12 in favor, zero against. Council Member Sledge. Oh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm working currently with uh, Metro Water and with codes on this and just got the 
notes for a potential substitute or amendment uh, this afternoon. The things are going well, but I need a couple more weeks to work on it. So I make a motion for a one meeting deferral, please. Okay, motion is defer one meeting properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to defer say aye. 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 Um, no, if you're objecting to it. Any abstentions? Okay, so the motion to defer one meeting is approved. 44, zero against, zero abstentions. 40 to zero, zero. Any corrections to that? That's the vote. 2022-36 by Council Member Sledge is deferred one meeting. Bill 2022-37 by Council Member Mendes, Henderson and Allen, ordinance approving amendment two to the contract between Waste Management Inc. of Tennessee and the following government through the Department of Public Works for the processing and marketing of recyclable materials collected by Metro and extending the contract term through 2025. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. The Budget and Finance Committee recommended approval of this bill, uh, 10 in favor, one against. Okay. Uh, request the other committee report. Public Works, Council Member Henderson, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, the Public Works Committee recommended uh, approval, eight in favor, three against, with one abstention. A fair okay. amount of uh, discussion um, in our committee about it. All right, thank you, Council Member Henderson. Council Member Mendes, you're recognized. I'd like to move approval with a not brief explanation. All right, Council Member Mendes moves approval properly. Seconded, back to you for a not for brief explanation. All right, so um, the, the thing that causes angst about this is that it requires approximately a million dollar payment uh, to waste management now and then picking up higher payments with the next fiscal year um, in order to continue recycling in Nashville. And especially at these uh, dark financial times, dark health, uh, public health crisis, the idea of spending more money um, is, um, uh, it, it, it bothers all of us. Um, I'll be honest that uh, um, I, I felt uh, opposed to this, was opposed to this um, in the fall when I first heard about the conversation, but here's the reality. Um, international markets on recycling products have completely changed due to a change in the Chinese government and our providers give us recycling. We already, everybody knows we've already got fairly weak recycling program just once a month. But even to do that, our vendor waste management has been losing money and they started talking to public works about this um, about a year ago, and, and frankly, the Briley administration um, didn't want to get it to the finish line during the election, probably because there was a giant hole in the budget. And um, the vendor was asked to wait. They kept losing money. They've been losing money, losing money, losing money. And, and things have come to a head. Um, they've been patient. But the reality is, in order for the city to keep um, having a recycling program, this is going to be the cost, um, and it's, um, it feels terrible to have to spend the money, um, but that's uh, why um, I'm supportive of it, because we, we, we have to uh, keep having a recycling program. We have to do that, and, and the amount of money uh, reflects a fair trade with our vendor in order to keep the, the program going. So with that, I would renew the motion to support. All right, thank you, Council Member Mendes. I've got a couple of people in the queue. Uh, Council Member Allen, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I appreciate Council Member Mendez explaining the financial aspects of this, and I, I would agree that under the current market prices, um, it will it be an added expense, um, but I also would point out that, that market prices I believe for recyclables are going to improve in the not very distant future, and that this is not necessarily what the cost will be in another year or two. And that we've worked very hard to build this program, um, and I think there's strong public support. And it is not free to throw um, throw materials away if we decide not to recycle. So that it's um, it's it's money we spend in one pot or in another pot. Um, and I think um, on the um, eve of Earth Day, this is an appropriate. Um, for them to continue to support as we uh, work towards our zero waste master plan um, and, and 
reached the point where we are diverting more and more from the landfill, which is shrinking and is quickly filling up, and we will have to look for alternatives that will become much more expensive um, in the not too distant future. So we need to continue to work on um, making sure that what waste can be diverted from the landfill now is. All right, I, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think that was a question. It was just a comment, I believe. Is that right, Councilmember Allen? That's correct. It was just a comment and a word of support and request okay. for support from other council members. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank we did have a brief but tough discussion about this in the Public Works Committee, and I wanna thank Council Member Allen for chairing a subcommittee on solid waste for us. I think something she said is one of the reasons that I'm, I'm expecting to be supportive of this and would encourage others to be as well. You know, th this, as we close out fiscal year 20, as we look toward fiscal year 21, even without um, a recommended uh, hand, we have a state of Metro uh, with some pretty alarming uh, financial guidance already in it, right? So we know that this coming year, as we close out fiscal year 20, there's gonna be a lot of effort put into, you know, trying to prevent degrading public services and also trying to protect public employees uh, while maintaining public health and what we can maintain of an economy locally. Um, things will not always be in balance, but I don't think we should step away from strategic goals that we have uh, especially when they're popular. Uh, we are trying to create a city that can take a step in the direction of being zero waste. I mean, right now that plan is a 30 year plan. I don't think eliminating uh, a curbside recycling program that I routinely get requests for expansion of is the is a step in the right direction. I think we're gonna be working at every possible measure we can take to reduce costs of Metro, um, you know, to, to try to protect public employees. And in, in this case, I think, you know, as we as we consider all of the pros and cons, uh, I am left ready to support this. Okay. Thank you, council member. I've got council member Young, you recognize. Thank you, vice Hi. mayor. And I certainly appreciate the uh, other comments made so far, but I think when we look at, at what Metro government does as, as a whole, um, there are just about everything that we do with Metro is, is working towards some sort of different strategic goal. And I think in a, in a time like this, uh, there are unprecedented times. Um, and when we have a recycling program that is minimal uh, in the sense that it is just once a month, and it is only for those in the USD. It is hard for those of us such as myself in the GSD to watch uh, amounts of money like this Metro get forced into, um, especially when we're looking at a budget that we're gonna have to go through and make these very difficult choices or and really kind of retrospectively uh, look at ourselves and, and, and decide what truly is essential for uh, Metro government to continue operating um, within our means. Um, paying a $1,057,000 penalty, of course, uh, I think the vendor here takes issue with the word penalty, but however, um, I, I just, I question, to be frank, I question the legitimacy of amending this contract to begin with when the basis of it was a change in Chinese law. Whether that even qualifies as a change in quote applicable law as the contract states, I think would be something worthy of litigating or at least getting uh, more intense legal scrutiny. I think that as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, tonight, we have such great employees, and yet well, something like $6 million to fund a step increase has been pulled off the table uh, by the administration's presentation to the Civil Service Commission, 
yet we can magically pull this one million fifty seven thousand dollars out of the public works budget to pay this penalty so that we can continue in a contract that is going to cost us an additional uh, approximately one point five million dollars per year to be benefiting uh, our our uh, USD when our uh, employees across the entire county um, aren't getting the same treatment. Um, I know I'm a, I'm a fan of recycling. I participate in recycling uh, here in Goodlettsville, um, and, and I'm, I'm certainly not against recycling, but I think we just have to make these really tough decisions on, on what truly is essential for Metro to continue operating at this point. And I'm just not sold that the way that this situation is structured is something healthy for Metro to move forward in. And so all I ask of my colleagues is that as we have items like this come before us, that we think about the long-term implications. Thank you. All right. There you go. Thank you, Councilmember Young. Uh, Councilmember Johnston, you're recognized. My question is on... Um, process, I guess, because I know that um, even in my district, I get a lot of complaints that recycling hasn't been picked up and it turns out there's some compliance issues as far as um, putting things into the bins that are not um, actually recyclable. So my question to whoever um, would be what percentage of what we're actually collecting um, what are we? Pre what percentage of trash are we pre preventing from actually going into the landfill? I'm all for recycling, and I'm all for being as green as we can possibly be. But what? What is our cost-benefit analysis? Um, sort of tailing off of what Councilman Young just got through saying is, what are we? I mean, we're paying a decent amount of money. Um, what are we actually? What are, what are our benefits? What are we? preventing from going into the landfill and and how is that benefiting us as far as uh, the money that we're putting into it so councilmember johnson it's a good question we're looking around the room and i'm not sure if anybody can answer it <laughs> councilmember allen do you know councilmember allen i i can't tell you what percentage is i'm sure that sharon smith could provide that before third reading Okay, so what I think I heard was that you can take a look at it and then provide it before third reading. That's Councilor true. Johnson, is that okay? Is this something that we need to defer to get that um, information before? I mean, this is, I guess, a more of a procedural question for um, Mr. Cooper. I, I just don't, I, like I said, I am all for being as green as we can possibly be. I, but I also don't want to waste money when we're looking at raising property taxes um, and not, again, not providing raises for our most valued employees. Um, every dollar needs to be very highly scrutinized. And if this if this program is not working, um, I think we need to really take a look at the cost benefit analysis of it. So do we defer or can this can this be amended or, I mean, obviously it can be defeated on third reading, but. Uh, Mr. Mr. Cooper. So typically the, the, for a significant reason to defer is so that the bill can be amended. Um, in this case, this is a negotiated contract between Metro and the vendor. So the council could not unilaterally amend it and, and have it be effective. To, both parties would have to agree to it. So from that standpoint, um, receiving the information before third reading, uh, you would essentially be in the same position. Okay. Uh, Councilor Mayor Johnston? Yeah. Yes, so is this my formal request for, to get this information as far as the cost benefit analysis and what percentage of the recycling that we receive actually goes to be recycled versus uh, goes into the landfill regardless um or do i need to send an email to either one of the sheriffs or both in public works councilman johnston we've got it down and so mr cooper will follow up for you okay 
Thank you so much. Okay. Councilman Benedict, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. So I want to circle back to what the budget and finance chair um, talked about, which is the, I, I come up from a background with um, similar contract type um, negotiations as the contract that this company has with Metro, um, certainly totally different industry. I also come from a, a background where uh, the recycling of products was a part of what um, my company provided. And so although this is definitely different from what I did, I'm very familiar with the processes and what it's like to be on the vendor partner side of the relationship. And in this particular case, and having reviewed the contract and spoken with um, Ms. Smith in the public works department um, and, and vetted this through budget and finance, as, as the chair said a few moments ago, um, I, I am of the opinion that if we don't proceed with this, I think that there is risk of litigation um, and a very serious risk of litigation that potentially this is, this. Um, I think somebody mentioned that this has been a negotiation that's been going on for as much as a year, somewhere thereabouts, and that this is, uh, uh, this is an a cumulative amount of money that has built up over that time frame, And um, as I understand it, it's been negotiated and renegotiated. I believe it went to the Department of Finance recently and was um, uh, negotiated in an even better position for Metro, even though it is a significant, obviously, um, amount of money. So I, I think, you know, going back to Council Member O'Connell's comments about as a city, what do we want to focus on? Um, yeah, as a, there's a need for us to provide the service. The community wants us to provide the service. It's a good thing for us to provide the service. Um, the market should bounce back, but right now there's been, a, and for about five years, um, there's been a, a, the market has constricted on this. And so at some point that will bounce back. And I think that the 70-30 split and all the terms that have been renegotiated um, will benefit Metro in the in the longer term. So um, it's not an easy decision, there's no doubt. I think as we go through the budget process, we're going to find ways that we can make sure that our employees are getting um, the, the compensation that they deserve. Um, I'm committed to doing that, but I also think this is the right thing. I think it should be an and. This is the right thing for us to do um, for our constituents who want to continue recycling, it's the right thing for us to do with this um, this vendor. There's just not other ones out there, from my experience um, in the recycling um, uh, and, and the, my limited exposure to that that line of business. So I, I think that in, it's in. I'm going to support this, and I, I urge my colleagues to do so as well. Thank you. All right, Council Member Evans, you recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I have two questions and Councilwoman Benedict, I think tapped into one of the questions, but uh, the first question um, is if we had any idea what percentage of USD, the additional taxes that the USD pays actually kind of translates into curbside recycling. So that's one question. And then the other question was really around the contract and if there's a penalty um, if we did not move forward or if potentially we decided that we didn't want as a city to have curbside recycling. Mr. Cooper. I would need to get with public works to find out the percentage of the USD tax levy that goes to recycling, but that is recycling is one of the functions that is paid for out of the um, additional USD tax rate. Um, and what, what was the second question? I'm sorry. The second yes, question was about, about if we have a penalty, if we did not move forward with the agreement. Um, and also okay. if we had a penalty kind of related to if for some reason we voted against this and decided we wanted to take it further and not have curbside recycling, um, what would that look like from a contractual perspective? So I think under the, the contract, um, one of two things would happen. One would be uh, we uh, are sued by waste management and then we fight it out in court over whether the change in Chinese 
law is considered a change in applicable law under the contract, um, we could end up paying more money or less money. I, I don't know how the litigation would would fall out. Um, the second, and I would say probably more likely, is that waste management would terminate the contract, which they have the right to do, and then Metro would be forced to either find an emergency provider um, at a higher cost or to stop the recycling program altogether. Thank you. Councilor, okay, thank you, Councilmember Evans. Uh, Councilmember Nash, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, the Public Works uh, Committee back in December, I believe it was, had a meeting with the vendor and the representatives from the Public Works Department explaining this whole process, kind of in the mood of negotiations. But I think that I certainly got the impression, I think most of the committee did, that these negotiations were going on in good faith and uh, trying to address a real problem. And I, I have to trust that the work Public Works did, work that the new administration has done, has got us the best bill we can have. And I don't see us uh, ending curbside. I don't know what we do with all the extra carts we've got. So um, I, uh, I would encourage passage. Okay, thank you, Councilor Nash. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I up on Councilmember Johnson's kind of request for data and I did look up. So from the solid waste master plan, we only divert in the city all together, we divert 24% of waste from the landfill. Though that's not 24%, that's recycled. That's recycling and composting together. Um, and recycling makes up about 16 of those 24 percentage points. Our residential recycling is ridiculously over. Um, residential recycling is less than 6% of all our residential waste. We compost better than we recycle in our residential waste. Um, but when we're thinking about the need for a recycling service, you know, obviously we were talking more than 12 months ago about going to twice a month and how that's not, you know, fiscally possible right now but we're gonna be the last council that gets to dodge the question of where do we put our waste? Because by the time the next council is in office, Middle Point Landfill is gonna be filled up. So if we decide that we're not gonna do this sort of contract deal, and like Mr. Cooper said, we either have to find an emergency recycler or we just do not recycle for some period of time, Every month that we don't do that is just a is just another shaving off of that five to eight years that we have left at middle point. So I would encourage colleagues, I think we're having a great discussion, but I would encourage colleagues to not only vote for this contract, but we're gonna have to be very intentional over this term to think about what we're doing to set the next council up to figure out what our long term solution is. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you. Councilor Glover, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I, want to, I want to remind some people of, of words you've said tonight. Waste management is losing money. Uh, we, could get, we, we could face litigation if we don't do this. I'd like to remind, of, of, this is $1,057,000. I won't be supporting this, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because our, our employees, our first responders, all of our employees, we had an agreement with them uh, in the last council that we didn't honor. In fact, we reneged on it, but they didn't have the option of a lawsuit or anything else that they could threaten us with. In fact, they just had to kind of walk away with no, no significant answers and certainly no money in their pocket. So I'm not gonna support this because I don't think it's something that's absolutely essential, nor do I think that it has to be done this very moment when we just have to have it quote finished before the end of you know this fiscal year. 
uh, but I can't support it when we talk about these types of things, but we don't have the same passion when we're worried about the our employees and the raises and the cost of living and, and the things we didn't do for them. And that's a lot more money than this, but it all plays a part of it. So with that, Vice Mayor, I won't be supporting this. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilmember Glover, Councilman Suara. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, uh, I was trying to uh, unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions, and I don't know if I missed it. My my uh, connection was going in and out. I wanted to find out, does anybody know how much was the uh, GINA contract that we had before this uh, renewal? So could you repeat the question? Question is, what was the original contract? How much were we paying a year annually uh, on the suspense of the first five years? Mr. Cooper. So before the change in, in law and uh, Chinese law or policy and the, the collapse of the recycling commodities market, um, we were actually breaking even. I mean, we weren't we weren't having to pay anything out because the amount of the recyclable materials that was being sold offset the cost of uh, providing the service. That's not the case anymore until the market turns around. So uh, we have not been paying any money up until now. What was the processing fee that we signed on to? I understand that the processing fee is an up to amount that we will reduce as we're making money. And I understand that maybe we broke even in the past, but what was that amount to start with? So it, it depended on the type of material. Um, under the current agreement, that was anywhere from $25 to $77 per ton. Um, it, that under the contract amendment is going from $33, between 33 and $101 per ton. Um, there is also a change in the, the split between Metro and the vendor of any, any profit. So if, if the market turns around, then we would then get 70% of the revenue um, as opposed to the 50% currently. Yeah. The reason why I was asking is that I know that the law changed in 2018, which is only two years. And that to me looks like it's about 500,000 a year penalty or adjustment. So I was trying to figure out how much it was annually that it was costing us is any uh, to be able to determine how the, the $500,000 500, uh, uh, payments comes up to. So that, that was uh, the reason for the questioning. The other thing that I wanted to also ask is we are trying to change the uh, frequency of the pickup. And so I don't know if somebody asked this before, if we remain at once a month, we continue the recycling program, but we do not increase it, uh, what would that cost look like? So if we went to twice per month collection, the estimated annual cost would be uh, roughly $2,250,000. Um, it's my understanding that that would drop um, 750,000 to a million uh, if we stay at the uh, once a month collection. Okay, and my last question is the two million or the one million, is this uh, uh, after we've taken into consideration how much we make off of the, uh, off of our 70% or 70-30 or this is before? I think the, the split is, is only if the sale of the material exceeds the cost. And um, currently, the costs are greatly exceeding the, the revenue generated. Okay, and I'm gonna ask one last question. Uh, the 2.2 million or whatever the processing fee is, do we pay all of that or is that an up to amount, meaning that depending on how we do during the year, how much we're making or losing. Is that like an up to amount that we may not get to, or is that a fixed amount? Uh, that's an estimated amount. It would depend upon the amount 
um, collected and the types of material that was collected. But that, that's just an estimate that Public Works has put in um, really for budgeting reasons. Thank you. Uh, for me, I think that I, I, I'm going to stay with, uh, I understand the need for us to recycle. I think it's very important and people are asking for it. But I also understand the, the, the costs of increasing uh, uh, the, the contract. If we can save a million dollars by remaining at, uh, uh, once a month, what is the downside to that? Um, so that is where I would like to go. Um, if that is possible, if we can get some more data on that and, and see if we start one, one, once a month with not adding an additional million every month, that's a million that we're saving annually for the next five years. So um, thank you all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councilman Mendez, you're recognized. Thanks, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, again, I'm going to ask everybody to go ahead and support this. Um, the things we know for sure is the uh, international market for these recycled products uh, crater and the fundamental deal we have with our trading partner has changed and they've been losing money. Uh, thing two we know for sure is um, uh, we know it's been well publicized how hard the Cooper administration bargains with third parties. Um, we saw, we've seen that on multiple deals. I think it's fair to say um, that the Cooper administration aggressively um, negotiated on this um, over the last several months, and uh, they support um, the uh, amendment. And then thirdly, um, we've, we've got a vision issue uh, about what are we going to do, what are, who are we going to be as a city um, as we go through these crises? Are we going to live in uh, fear and, and walk toward austerity? Or are we going to work on continuing the services that we need to provide to the citizens of Davidson County? I believe that we need to be in favor of a continuity of the services. We're going to be able to do that, um, I think, uh, through the budget process. We need to have a positive vision. That, that's got to include, as Councilman Sledge said, um, that has to include having a recycling program, if for no other reason than to hold off the day when the landfill is completely filled, which is coming up in a few years down the road. All right, so the motion is to approve uh, BL 2020-237 um, on second reading. It's been properly seconded. I think we've cleared out the queue. Uh, we're ready to vote. It's the motion to approve on second reading. Uh, we'll do it by voice vote. All those in favor on second reading of 2020-237 say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, no. 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 I'm going to have them raise their hand, have the nose okay. raise their hand. So uh, for purposes of this, if you will raise your hand on the, the board, then I can actually tabulate what the vote is. If you're a no vote. If you're a no vote. Uh, and uh, is the dog voting no? I think the dog's okay. abstaining. Mm. So I've got 13. Let me double check. I am down as abstaining. 13. Okay. And, okay. and any abstentions? Okay. So what I've got is, uh, are there any abstentions? Yes. Okay. Okay. One abstention. All right. So the vote on second reading is 26 for, 13 against, and one abstention. 26 to 13 to one. Any corrections with that? Okay. If you, want, if you could actually, can you read off the no votes? Just yeah, yeah. So we've uh, been asked to read off the no votes. So I'm going to start at the top, make sure. So if you uh, please put your uh, put your hand back up because some people took it back off. If you're a no on this, please, I'm, I'm going to go through the make. I'm going to go through the list. Make sure we've got this right. Uh, Councilmember Johnston is a no. Councilmember Rosenberg is a no. Councilmember Evans is a no. Councilmember Welsh is a no. Councilmember Hauser, no. 
Councilmember Hall, no. Councilmember Swope, no. Councilmember Bradford, no. Councilmember Glover, no. Councilmember Vercher, no. Councilmember Young, no. Councilmember Sawara, no. Okay. Oh, well, wait a minute, let's count again. So that now I'm at 12. One, two, three. Yeah, that's 12. Vice Mayor, Glover, Glover was a no. Uh, my, 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 uh, Glover was a no. I don't. My audio is going in and out on my on this. Yeah, I've got you as a no. Somebody changed. Somebody took it. Uh, Councilmember Nash, we're just confirming your vote. Are you a no or a yes? I'm a yes. That was left out from where I spoke earlier. Sorry. Okay. All right. So twenty. So I've got. We've got 27 for 12 against and one abstention. 27 to 12 to one. So the bill passes on second reading, all right? All right, so we're now ready for um, bottom of page 10, BL 2022-47 by Council Member Murphy and Henderson. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer mains and easements and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements for property located at 4317 Harding Pike. Councilmember Murphy, <clears throat> Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized. Committee reports, please. Uh, Public Works, Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor, I apologize. Can you repeat the bill number, please? Sure, uh, bill 2020-247. Thank you. The Public Works Committee recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against. Okay, uh, Councilor Murphy, planning and zoning. Thank you, we are, we voted 14 in favor, zero against to defer this one meeting. Okay, so Councilor Murphy, what do you wanna do, it's your bill? I would like to defer this one meeting because I need to discuss this project with the administration. Um, I think that they have concerns about it. All right, so the bill is, uh, the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? I've still got a lot of hands up on this thing, but I assume these are all people who voted no the last time. All right, so uh, the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion uh, for one meeting, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, Opposed, no. Any abstentions? 44, zero against, zero abstentions. 40 to zero to zero, any corrections to that? That's the vote, bill is deferred one meeting. That completes our calendar on second reading. We're now on bills on third reading. Um, and we also have a consent calendar. I'm gonna go through that. <coughs> Um, these are bills on third reading. I'm on page 12 of the calendar. Um, so these are bills on the consent calendar, BL 2020, 193, 198, 199, 200, 202, 203, 204, 205, 206, 207, 208 and 222. Anything needs to be bumped off that calendar? It's every bill except for the first two and then BL 2020-201. Anything that needs to be bumped? Councilmember Welsh, uh, your hand's still up. Anything that needs to be bumped? All right, <clears throat> so the, I'm gonna read the captions of the bills on, this is on third reading, this is the, the consent calendar on bills on third reading. BL 2020-193 by Withers, Murphy and others, ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley center line layer for the metropolitan government by abandoning a portion of Tillman Lane right of way and easement from Riverside Drive to the railroad right of way. 2020-198, O'Connell, Mendes and others, ordinance approving and authorizing the director of public property administration uh, to accept a donation of real property located at 128 Lifeway Plaza. 
and 1008 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. 2020-199 by Mendes Murphy and Henderson. Ordinance amending Exhibit 1 to BL 2017-1000 to include an additional three tracks. BL 2020-200 Murphy, Mendes and others. Ordinance authorizing the acquisition of certain rights of way, drainage easements, temporary construction easements and property rights by negotiation or condemnation for use in public projects of the Metropolitan Government initially for purposes of Public Works Department Project Number 2018 R006, Bowling Avenue sidewalk improvements. Uh, BL 2020-202, Hager, Welsh and Stiles, ordinance approving an agreement between the Metropolitan Government acting by the Department of Parks and Rec and Belmont University to allow occupational therapy students the opportunity to participate in experiential, uh, experiential learning. Uh, BL 2020-203, O'Connell, Murphy and others, Ordinance authorizing CVA Inc. to install and construct and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 511th Avenue North, BL 2020-204, O'Connell, Murphy and others. Ordinance authorizing CVA Inc. to install, construct and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at One Lifeway Plaza, 2020-205, O'Connell, Murphy and others. Ordinance authorizing CVA Inc. to install, construct and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 530 11th Avenue North. Uh, BL 2206, O'Connell, Murphy, and others. Ordinance authorizing CVA Inc. to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 406 11th Avenue North. BL 202207, O'Connell, Murphy, and others. Ordinance again authorizing CVA, CVA Inc. to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 511th Avenue North. And two more for CVA, uh, 202208, O'Connell, Murphy, and others. Ordinance authorizing CVA Inc. to install, construct, maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 515 11th Avenue North and BL 2020 222 O'Connell and Murphy. Ordinance authorizing CVA Inc. to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 1100 Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard. Those are the bills on um, the consent calendar for third reading. I'm double checking. All the committee reports are in, so we don't need committee reports. Councilmember Menders, can I get a motion to approve those on third reading? Okay. Got a motion. Councilmember Syracuse's um, second. Um, any discussion on any of those bills? Those are the, all the bills on third reading on the consent calendar. Okay, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. Seeing nobody in the queue, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Uh, the bills on third reading on the consent calendar are approved a 44, zero against, a zero abstentions. 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? Consent calendar passes 40 to zero to zero. Um, we have three bills left, BL 2019-109 as amended by Council Member O'Connell, Henderson, and Allen. Ordinance amending Chapter 12.62 of Title 12 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws and substitute ordinance number BL 2019-1658 regarding shared urban mobility devices. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues might remember that we accepted two administrations, uh, two, two amendments, and I'd like to move the bill as, uh, as amended. All right, so there's a motion to approve 2019-109 as amended. Uh, proper motion, proper second. Discussion on the bill. Seeing none, we're on the bill on third reading, 2019-109 as amended. All those in favor of the bill on third reading indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Hearing none. Hearing none, the bill passes 40 to zero to zero, 44, zero against, zero abstentions. Bill passes 2019-109 as amended. Any corrections to that vote? 40 to zero to zero. Bill passes. Um, BL 2020-149 as amended. Council Member Toombs, Taylor and others. Ordinance amending Title 11 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to require a landlord to provide notice prior to an increase in rent. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, move for approval. Okay, so I got a motion to approve. 
Properly seconded. Discussion on the bill. Council Member Glover, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Very quickly, if I may, uh, Mr. Cooper, do we have authority in this? like the Landlord Tenant Act and things that, that have state jurisdiction? Mr. Cooper? So the uh, Uniform Residential Landlord and Tenant Act does not specifically preempt local governments from imposing such a requirement, um, at, least, at least currently. Um, one could argue that uh, local governments have been, that basically the state has preempted the field um, for this type of regulation, but I think um, after our review of the, the law, we thought it was a, a close enough question um, in, in favor of Metro that, that um, we would have that authority. Councilor Robert Glover? No, that, that, that's okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Council Member Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I still, um, even with that, explanation from Mr. Cooper. I have concerns about us setting policies on um, landlords and tenants that, that don't carry across county lines, um, that I have concerns about uh, the mom and pop uh, uh, landlords who might not know about this and, and uh, uh, about public outreach on it. Um, and I have concerns that we'll get preempted on, on this. Not that, I mean, that's ever stopped me before, but but this has this raises enough red flags for me that that I'm going to have to vote against it. And I believe that the Realtors Association has uh, either either sent a letter on it or sent a letter on the amendment. But, but at the end of the day, I am just I'm I'm still not comfortable with the amended language, and I'll be voting no. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. Councilmember Johnston. Thank you, President. Thank you. Um, I have concerns about the inconsistency of this, um, who it applies to and the enforcement of it. Um, as far as the inconsistency goes, um, with the Uniform uh, Residential Landlord and Tenant Act, for Davidson County to have a different set of rules than every other county um, in the state is concerning and uh, would possibly create a decent amount of confusion between um, with people. Also, with who it applies to, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Council Member Toombs, but my um, my understanding of this is that if if the original lease of anyone, if if the if there's a clause that um, mentions the potential or general future rent increases, that this does not apply to them. So then, if if it if you do have a clause, it does apply. Or it doesn't apply. If you don't have a clause, it does. So there's some inconsistency as to who it applies to, but there's definitely uh, within Davidson County, but there's definitely inconsistency as to who it applies to from Davidson County to, for example, Williamson County or any other surrounding county um, in Tennessee. Then the enforcement as well, um, it's my understanding that the only amount that's in, that is in question legally is the amount of the rent increase. So if, you're, if your original rent is $1,000 and the landlord increases to $1,100, it's only $100 that is legally questionable. And so uh, my fear is that we would have a court system that would be possibly inundated um, with, with these small claims. I just, um, I, I would, I, I understand and respect the, the intent of the bill, I really do. Um, and I, I'm all for protecting those vulnerable um, citizens that we have. I just think that this bill has so many inconsistencies um, and, and the unintended consequences of the, of the mass confusion that it will cause um, outweighs, outweighs the benefit that there would be. So I would, I would encourage my colleagues to vote against this. Right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hauser, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to say that this bill really follows any landlord that now takes MDHA Section 8 is already having to do this. Because if you have Section 8, you've got to notify MDHA and you've got to notify the tenant 90 days in advance. So this, this is not 
way out on the limb. It's really very consistent with policies that are already in place. And it just brings all you know, the same protection as those that are the state now have. And one of the things that we are noticing in Nashville is that often events are dramatically jumping from one year to the next. And so we need to make sure that if that's going to happen to a tenant, they have enough time to find another place to live. Uh, and if 30 days is not enough time to find another place to live and, and make that move. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councilmember Halster, Councilmember Benedict. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Sorry, it took me a minute to get unmuted. So, okay. you know, for me, this, thank you. So, um, uh, one of the prior speakers mentioned the Realtors Association. I'm a realtor and, and, and um, I don't always agree with what my colleagues agree to. So, so there's that. But um, I think it's important to, to look at what is the right, decent thing to do. And it is right and decent to give somebody notice um, and, and plenty of notice if you're going to be increasing the rent. Uh, certainly a landlord is able to um, project what their expenses are and typically they know what their expenses are at least 90 days in advance. And so it's only fair that we um, do what we can to protect those who um, are, are paying rent and need that type of protection so, and so that they um, are, are able to prepare or you know make a decision that they can't stay in that that location so to me i think it's just a matter of fairness and equity uh most of us i think um, campaigned and were elected because the community right now is looking for more equity um from its leaders and from um from you know whether that's a landlord or whomever that that's out there we want equitable housing we want equitable um pay we want there's a lot of things when we talk about equity but and this is a great way for us as a city to focus on um how we can help renters have an equitable chance to stay in their home um and also you know let landlords have an equitable um, um approach you know it's a level playing ground when you've got you know landlords that are required to do the same thing across the board Somebody also spoke earlier about what happens in other counties and that this would be inconsistent with other counties, but there are plenty of things that Nashville does that other counties don't do. Going back to the topic of recycling, you know, not everybody has curbside recycling. So Nashville may do things differently than other counties, and I just don't see that as anything relevant to this. So I would just encourage everyone to think about, you know, those folks who are being impacted by a landlord coming in and raising their rent very quickly and 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 you know consider what their life is like and how it could be protected and and think about the the, the tenant here not the landlord these folks are in need of this especially right now in the city um, and you know even beyond the COVID 19 pandemic there's people that are and and the tornado there are people who are going to need this type of protection going forward but most certainly right now so um, I support this bill and I ask that my colleagues support it as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member Parker, you recognize. Um, thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. I, uh, I'm i gonna, I'm gonna support this bill on third reading. Um, I think it's a, a basically a extraordinarily modest um, um, sort of, um, reform of, of the way that, that landlording works in Nashville. Um, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, oh, well, this is going to, it's going to conflict as, as Council Member Benedict pointed out, this will conflict with Williamson County or this will conflict with some County. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's, those, those counties have different legislative bodies and those counties have different rules on a number of things. So I don't really see that as being like something that should stop us um, here. And, and you know, if if the courts find that this um, isn't something we can do, if the state sees fit to preempt us on it, um, then so be it. Then we're kind of back where we where we started from. Um, and, and and in addition, um, you know, uh, there was concern about uh, indicating this change in the rules to uh, mom and pop um, smaller smaller landlords. You know, uh, every landlord. 
um, should have their property registered with contact information uh, with the city. So, you know, if that's a real concern, uh, I, I would, you know, support sending a letter out to those folks just to let them know that, hey, this, this very modest rule change has occurred and um, we'll, we'll need you to abide by it moving forward. Um, I think that that's, that's perfectly reasonable. And, um, you know, I also, okay. I mean, you, I, I don't think that. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I, I was just going to say, I don't think that, you know, even if even if someone were to, to run afoul of this because they didn't know about it, I don't I don't think that, you know, we're going to, whatever the penalties are, it's going to put them out of business or something. I mean, I think that, I think that folks are probably still going to be fine, um, even if they were found to have not been complying with this for, for, a, for a lease cycle, um, and then they'll be able to get on board with the new rules once they find out about it. So um, with that, I would urge all my colleagues to support this bill on third reading, and thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Sepulveda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I also uh, want to raise um, in, in support of this um, bill. Um, I represent uh, one of the uh, poorest districts in the city, and we have one of the highest uh, percentages of renters here. And I heard so many stories as I was campaigning and knocking on doors of people who have been taken advantage of by uh, terrible landlords. That doesn't mean that there aren't good ones but there are a lot of people that are suffering right now. And I think this is the perfect first step. And I know there's concerns about it not being in line with other parts of the state. Um, but honestly, that when it comes to this, that is not my concern. My concern is about the people in my district and the people of Nashville. So I would encourage uh, other council members to support this. Okay. Council member Taylor, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I too am in uh, highly support of this of this bill. Thank you, Council Member Toombs, uh, for introducing and carrying this bill. Um, mm -hmm. At least three times a week in District 21, I get a call uh, from constituents, friends, people trying to help uh, find individuals a place to stay because they've got such a short notice to increase their rent and. Uh, as we, as we move through um, what we've planned to do here as a council uh, with being transparent and having transparency um, with how we're gonna manage business uh, as a council, uh, I'd ask for you, all of my colleagues to understand that we wanna have trans, we want to also extend that transparency into how we handle business as a city and how our residents handle business. And so I will ask you just to stand with uh, Council Member Toombs to support this bill on third reading tonight uh, to protect those individuals that um, that are calling, asking, where can I go? Where can my family go? Uh, we have uh, several individuals, specifically in District 21, uh, that I know have to change schools in the middle of the school year. They have to move in the middle of the school year. Um, it hurts the family dynamic. It hurts the, the stability. Uh, and um, adding some protection and some safety nets for these individuals would be great. Um, so again, I will support this bill and I ask you all to stand with us as well. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Young. Previous question. The previous question has been called. Um, we're voting on the previous question. Uh, all those in favor of the previous question, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 I need, I need to abstain. Okay. Larry has so to go. abstain. I think I've got um, two no's. No. Glover's no also. You want to use the hands again? Okay, so if you'll clear your hands and just indicate um, on the previous question who's voting no. Uh, Councilmember Toombs, uh, your hand's still on there. Porterfield, Johnston. Just uh, clear the board for just a minute and just indicate who was voting no on that bill on the previous question. <laughs> Robert Porterfield Taylor. Yeah, I don't. Uh, so, uh, Councilmember Taylor, you're voting no on the previous question. 
Waterfield, no on the previous question. And no one previous no. question, Council Member Taylor. No on the previous question. Yeah, now hold on. Council Member Taylor is a no on previous question. Yeah. I know. All right, so we're just gonna say it passed by two thirds because we still only have a, a very few on there. So previous question prevails. We are now on uh, BL 2020-149 uh, as amended by council member Toombs. We're voting on the bill. Okay, this is a bill as amended on third reading, motion and properly seconded. We're on the bill. All those in favor of the bill say aye. 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 Opposed, no. 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 Abstain. no. I abstain. I abstain. The no's first and then the abstentions with the hand raised. Okay. We'll get the All right. So, um, so let me do the, well, I'm do it reverse. So council member Hager, I know is abstaining. Anybody else abstaining? Councilman Rose abstaining. Councilmember Roden abstaining. And Councilmember Hall. Councilmember Hall, Roden, and Hager. Are those Nash the three abstentions? Nash is abstaining. Who? Who else? Councilman Nash. Nash. Okay, so I've got four abstentions. Roden, Hall, Hager, and Nash abstained. Okay, now, uh, would, anybody voting no on the bill, if you will put your hand up, on the board so i can count okay anybody voting no on the bill <clears throat> so i've got um seven make sure i've got this right i've got council member johnston rosenberg murphy roberts glover hancock and young Seven no's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, uh, so everybody else is voting aye. So it's gonna be uh, 29, four, seven against. Can you say the no's one more time just for the clerk to get them recorded? Yeah, yeah, hold on. If you'll just keep your names up on the board voting no. Zach Young is a no. Hancock is a no. Glover is a no. Roberts is a no. Murphy is a no. Rosenberg is a no. Johnston is a no. Got that? Mm -hmm. And then I got four. You got the four extensions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the vote is 29, four, seven against, four abstentions. 29 to seven to four. The bill passes. Um, any corrections on that vote? 29 to 7 to 4. BL 2020-149 as amended passes on third reading. Uh, last bill we have on the calendar is BL 2020-201 by Councilmember Pulley, Murphy, and others. Ordinance authorizing the Green Hills Mall TRG LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 2130 Abbott Martin Road. Council Member Pooley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I think the agenda mistakenly indicates is referred to the Planning and Zoning Committee, but uh, they heard it a few weeks ago and uh, deferred. So all committee reports are in uh, as a matter of review. Uh, Public Works uh, passed it and uh, Planning and Zoning uh, deferred the second meeting in May. Uh, I would like to advance the bill. Um, I'm happy to withhold my explanation unless somebody really wants to hear it. So, so it's with that, I move the committee. So it's eligible for passage tonight. You want to move the bill? Uh, I move move the bill. Got a, pass, a motion to pass on third reading, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Any abstentions? Bill passes 44, zero against, zero abstentions. 40 to zero to zero. Any corrections to that? Bill passes 2020-201, passes on third reading. That completes our calendar. 
Uh, remember budget proceedings the next week on the 28th is when 3.30 to 5 by, um, uh, we're gonna have a WebEx presentation. Um, I wanna thank all the IT people for helping tonight. Anything else we need to know? Um, looking around. Um, thank you, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Hello. Second. Motion, to, motion to adjourn and second, was there some, we're on an adjournment motion. Councilmember Glover? Did anybody want to be recognized? Yeah, I was trying I was trying to get your attention. I yes. All right. Yeah. We're on the motion. Councilmember Glover, you're recognized. Uh, I yeah, but I, I was trying to get before the motion, so may I may I make my or actually I, I have a question for Mr. Cooper. Okay, it's, uh, you're on a motion, you can't, uh, no, it's already, we've got the motion in front of us. Can you call them tomorrow? Too late today, we've got, we're on a motion. Okay, uh, I hope we get better at this. <laughs> All right, so the motion is to adjourn, properly second, and all in favor of the motion to adjourn, say aye. 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 Motion to adjourn is 40 to zero to zero. For a 40 minute meeting tonight on a 13 page agenda, perhaps the highlight of the evening or the number one story coming out tonight, an approval of a resolution that would uh, give a $35,000 settlement of a lawsuit involving one of the victims uh, of the white of the Waffle House shooting that occurred uh, two years ago uh, tomorrow. So almost within a day of when this actually happened two years ago, it's involved uh, Kila De Silva, uh, and actually for his uh, next to kin, uh, they, were, they had asked for three hundred thousand dollars. It was settled at thirty-five thousand. Metro did not think they were necessarily guilty of this, and yeah. felt that, his, that uh, Mr. Mr. De Silva's wounds were so bad that he would not have survived, regardless of the errors that they admitted happened at the 911 center. So they settled at thirty-five thousand dollars to avoid litigation. This was something the council had specifically asked for. Uh, and a concern uh, by the Metro Council Member Tanaka Rocher. And so the council brought this up tonight and approved it uh, unanimously on a voice vote actually on the uh, consent agenda tonight that was before the council. Uh, the council spent an hour of the meeting tonight uh, on the first matter before tonight, which was uh, approving a new Metro internal auditor. This is a position that uh, is required in the Metro Charter. It's been vacant for some time. Plus, nobody seemed to have a problem with the people that were nominated for it, and there were three persons who were brought before the council tonight with uh, the number one person ultimately being the one who was selected by the council. They had some problems, the council members had some problems about the process for that, so uh, it was a move to try to defer it. That was, uh, that was de a deferral that was actually defeated 32 to eight, and they approved Lauren Riley to be the new Metro Internal Auditor, and the vote on that was uh, 37 for, none against with uh, three abstentions. Uh, the council also tonight had a number of issues before it regarding economic issues coming out of the uh, pandemic going on right now. Uh, there are two non-binding memorializing resolutions. One was uh, re re requesting flexibility in rent and mortgage collections from uh, financial institutions and from landlords and expressing support by the council for moratorium on evictions and foreclosures to help provide housing security. The other non-binding resolution that was approved tonight asked the city's health department to see grant grant funding to track, study, and report on the impact of COVID-19 on minorities and rural communities. Among the second reading bills, uh, there was a bill that was gonna ask landlords to provide notice to tenants prior to the sale of their rental property. That was deferred for two meetings, but a bill on third and final reading, so council giving final approval tonight, 29-7 with four abstentions that uh, landlords have to give a 90-day notice to tenants before a rent in tease takes effect. Uh, the council also, uh, is uh, looking at uh, meeting again on May 5th at that particular time. Uh, they'll be looking at the budget for the first time. I should get that budget presented to them at a possible and a likely tax increase. The mayor's gonna make that presentation to them on a virtual format, much as you've seen here tonight. We will be done on next Tuesday, April 28th. Uh, the Metro National Network will provide live coverage of that. It'll be from 3.30 in the afternoon until five again here on April the 28th on next Tuesday. Uh, the council you, a couple of times tonight sort of got into a discussion about what's gonna be coming because they know the city's finances are in a very difficult situation right now. Uh, they uh, did approve a bill on second reading that could cost Metro up to $60,000 in 
in building fees, this is for people that are would be applying for rebuilding permits uh, be as a part of the tornado that happened back in the first part of March. Uh, there was some concern about that, but uh, that's not in, enough money to make a big difference. So the council went ahead and approved that. That was not as true on uh, a bill that was before them tonight that uh, would renegotiate a bill with waste management involving the recycling program for the city. It's going to cost the city a couple million dollars, uh, two million dollars the first year, the next year, million the next five years as the contract goes on. Some council members did not like to be able to do that, but the recycling program is very popular. And the, the alternative is probably not having a recycling program, but I think you see the angst the council is going to be facing on this and other matters as the uh, issue comes up tonight to uh, take care of that between now and the 1st of July when the council must approve a budget. Uh, finally tonight on third and final reading, the, the council approved new rules and regulations uh, to regulate uh, both the, the amount and the size of the fleet of the vehicles for electric scooters. Also authorize a new RFP to go out and a request for proposal for firms to bid and there'll be firm, just a certain number of firms selected to uh, provide scooters in Nashville. This has been an issue that's been going on for some time. Uh, this is not the first time the council's tried to regulate it. Uh, they're going to go forward with this. And this one will go to the mayor. It was The final vote was done on a voice vote, so there was no opposition recorded on it. It goes to him now for his signature. Again, the council will meet again, and we'll be here at that time to provide live coverage on May 5th. Until then, good night from the council chambers. Tonight This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.